Hello, and welcome to Jason Cabinet's Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinet. Here at Cabinet's HR, we're getting ready to launch a crowdfunding campaign on Refunder. For more info, go to https refunder.com slash Our guest today is CJ Dancer. CJ, ready to be great today? What's that? You ready to be great today? I am. Every day. So, softball question. Uh oh. What do you do for fun? Um, chill, really. I think, uh, depending on the day. So, if I just get off work, fun is probably playing some video games. Mm-hmm. If I go home, play some video games, watch a movie, chill, uh, watch sports. Um, the weekend, depending how I'm feeling, I'm, I'm getting old, man. I used to get out a lot, but now it's, it's, it's depending how I'm feeling. Yeah. If we get in the streets, I'll get in the streets a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm at that point, man, where it's like just staying sure, at the house. I'm sure our age getting the streets now is way different. Listen, it's way like different. <laughs> I told, um, it's funny. I um, I said this year I'm going to pick up golf. Uh-huh. And I remember when I was younger, I was like, I'll never do a golf. Yeah. That's not exercise. That's terrible. That's just walking around on some grass, swinging a stick. Now I'm ready to swing a stick on some grass. I'm yeah. ready. To- golf is fun if you play the right people, right? You can't play with people you don't like. Right. You got to have, yeah. have like three really close friends to it. The right people, the right beer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, right liquor, yeah. Yeah. Make sure you make sure the the drink chart cart goes around once in right, a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So cheers real fast. Alrighty. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So what kind of video games do you play? Uh okay. So younger, I was considered a gamer. I consider my now I play Halo and a game called Risk. Okay. That's it, bro. That's the stretch. I keep telling myself, well, maybe I should pick up a new one and i'm like i don't feel like learning no new stuff i used to play madden when i was younger and i haven't played madden so long dude i tried i think that's when i played maybe 2004 i think it was about the same yeah because i said nah, i'm gonna try and i and i threw the game in and you know now you gotta wait like the whole day before the game will start because it's got to run the whole disc or whatever yeah. So finally, I'm just trying to play. I'm just trying to pick a team and just play. And it's like, you got to start a whole career. Yeah. And I'll say, like, I don't be no fucking GM. No, you know? I just want to just want to hit play. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. So I play Halo. That's pretty much the main one. And then, you know. So you're like the master level of Halo? I'm pretty good. Cause you, so if some I'm random, pretty good, dude, man. If some random person challenges you, we can get it in. You, you can beat I'm pretty confident. Okay. I'm pretty confident, man. I'm not like, because, you know, they got the young dudes who like, do this for a living mm-hmm. now the e-gamers yeah they pay, i'm not there yeah they pay good money too oh they really pay these dudes but i am at a place man where okay, okay. yeah i ain't no sucker like okay we can shoot it up <laughs> not back in the day like parents would tell kids get off that game go play outside yeah and i was like parents say you better stay your ass inside the house and, and play that game dude i don't I, it's weird so me and some friends were having this conversation so we all got kids uh as you know i work with youth right and um I don't know. It's 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 our generation. We did it. It's not their fault. Yeah. We we were afraid to let them go yeah. play, right? So when we was kids, we was kicked out the house. Yeah. Right. And you lived off the water hose. Yep. You it's didn't like even we, eat food, we, man. Like we went all the way too too far. <laughs> Absolutely. Now we're too afraid to let them out the door, yeah. and then we wonder why they're staying with us until they're thirty. Yeah. The people are like right? you know like participation story uh, trophies. Yes. We're the ones that gave it to them, right? It had to be. You us. know, they didn't say as mad as we want to be. They yeah. didn't do it, right? Yeah, yeah. they're like, I, I, they're, they're like, I don't want a tenth place trophy. You gave it to me, you right? Know? Right. I got to put this thing up. You handed it to me, which it's, is the most ridiculous idea ever. But I know. Um, um, kind of still on game a little bit. You ever watch this? Have you ever watched a show called A Chai that comes on Showtime? Mm-hmm. It's like a show about the South Side of Chicago, right? Okay. And then a scene where it's like an all black high school. Well, these two kids are gamers, right? A black guy and a black girl, right? And so about the video games at school, and they got like they're gonna, they're gonna get kicked out. And the final teacher said, "Why were you kicking them out for? All the white kids play gaming and get paid a lot of money. Mm-hmm. How come we can't do it here, right? Like, man, that's freaking pretty, you know, like on point, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't. There's a lot of right now. It's different than, and I think we are trying to wrap our heads around like how do folks make a living now? So when we were younger, right, you're supposed to go to school yeah. and then you graduate school then then you either went to college, joined the military or found some job or you were in the streets, right? You had like yeah. four options. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, now, are you seeing like, you got TikTok folks oh, so making money. So many options. You got ladies selling feet. <laughs> like yeah, like no, there's, right? there's money to be made out here. 
And it's hard to tell the youth, like, do no. this thing. I mean, how can you tell the youth, go get a $100,000 student loan, be in debt with your life, you know? Right. Both, you know, especially, you say, I want to say, I want to call it a bullshit degree, but like, you have a degree in, like, you know, philosophy. Or, Come on, you know what it is. Or, yes. you know, so, you know, I hate to say liberal arts because it's a good it, it is what it is. Yeah. That's what I got mine in. Yeah. Um, you know, it's one of those areas where when you finish, you're looking for a job. And the job you're looking for is going to be one of those starter jobs at about 30, 35,000. Yeah. Now, the young people now, they'll get their liberal arts degrees and still want to make 80, 90,000 coming out of college. Yeah. Right. Um, but the reality is, yeah, you're going to, I amassed a lot of debt in college. Um, you know, I've been fortunate. I've made it. It's, it's helped me through life. But it's the same thing, right? It's kind of hard to tell a 15 year old right now. And they have some, and it's not even illegal means. There's still illegal illegal means yeah. out there, but there's a lot of yeah, legal we're not means about now, those, yeah. right? But there's a lot of legal means where, at this age, they can make real money. Yeah, right. Like two examples. Have you heard of this company called a uh, thing called Collie's Lemonade? Yes. Yeah, like she's 13, 40 years old. Yeah. I mean, she, I'm I'm making this up. I think she's worth a million dollars already, yes. or close to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, my you know? daughter. She follows these different people. Yeah on uh, either YouTube or whatever. There's there's one one young lady, she was making crazy money. She was making that slime. Okay, I knew what you were talking about, yeah. Yeah, she was like the slime queen. Yeah. The, and it's like, I mean, if your kid make a million dollars a year. Making a million dollars a year making slime, go make <laughs> slime. What can I tell you? Like, how are you going to say, go study for your, uh, your history or whatever? Yeah. yeah, like, I don't even know how you justify it. Yeah, no, like, like, yeah, like, I'll pay. Because now we're so, living off you, right? Like, exactly, right? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm your manager, I'm getting a percentage, right? Right, right. It's right. insane, right? And then, um, have you heard this guy called Mr. Beast? This big YouTube guy. I have not. I mean, he's yeah. like 23, 24 years old. What almost a million dollars really? off, off YouTube videos. That's crazy, isn't it? Off YouTube videos. He, YouTube videos. It is a restaurant called Mr. Beast Burgers. Yeah. Matter of fact, he, he did a guest appearance on um, Gordon Ramsay's cooking show about really? a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. And everyone, of course, knows Mr. Beast is, right? Yeah. Uh, they, they, you know. Except for me, probably. I'm yeah. the only one. <laughs> you, yeah. If you see him, you know, right? Okay. He does all these crazy videos, like, you know, this is craziness, right? Yeah. Like top notch videos, almost a billion dollars, 23, 24 yeah. years old, right? I mean, and like you said, oh, hey, daughter or son, you get up for school. Come on. Dad, I had a business. I have, I have a business. Dad, I'm in here making money. Leave me alone. There was, uh, so I don't know if you've noticed, there's like been this social media thing going on. I, I think it's a, a TikTok stuff, but mm -hmm. it's like, basically, I, I don't even know how, I'm going to describe it as best as I can, right? So TikTokers, People send them like different emoji things and they'll make these noises based on what you send me. Yeah. Right. Um, so I first seen it. This girl was doing it. Um, now it's like all these videos are coming up. And there was one in particular where the mom was trying to tell the boy to stop doing this because he needed to go do something. Mm -hmm. But apparently the 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 dude was making like six thousand dollars a day. Yeah. Right. And at some point I'm I'm like. Man, I don't. I won't know if I tell my son to stop. Like, go make your money, man. I mean, Six thousand a day. What are you gonna do legally at seventeen years old? How ruthless would be this? Be like, suppose someone has a fourteen year old kid, right? And the parents say, "You need to go. You need to do this, whatever." Mm -hmm. And the kid says, "Give you a piece of paper. What's this? I pay the mortgage for the next right. five years. <laughs> Leave, Leave me, me alone. alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't. So, so you know, I, the field I'm in, right, is is within youth and education. Um, it is a tough conversation because I still believe in the value of yeah. education. Yeah. Right. Um, the value of being a learned person, but it's tough. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you, if you can sing, right. If you really have the chops, why, why wait until you're 25, 20, you yeah. know, if you're 13 and then you're showing promise, yeah. You know, if you're the Michael Jackson of the world, do we hold that back yeah, because well, I want you to complete yeah. calculus? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I know. know the right way. And or, or, or you can sing really good. Why get a music degree? You know, uh, yeah, right. Like, I get it, and I can argue both sides. But at the same token, it's like, yeah, now, life me, is short. The one good thing about college, to me, it's more the social aspect. Right? You, you meet different people, especially like you were raised up with nothing but white people, nothing but black people. That's it. One one demographic to meet. Hopefully, you get go across different people that you can meet. Right? Yes. Different backgrounds. That is goodness on that. Yeah, but it's a tough well, sell now. It, it it well until they did this whole um, affirmative action thing in colleges. It may not yeah. be as, as diverse moving yeah. forward, but yeah. With yeah. that, do you think HBC is going to have like a like a significant increase in enrollment? Um, no, no. Okay, I don't think so. No, I, I know that's kind of the rumors. Like, oh, now there's going to be this uptick. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's different students. 
who were applying to predominantly white institutions yeah. and HBCUs. Um, I think you're still going to have students applying to predominantly white institutions. Um, they might be a small uptick, yeah. but one of the challenges with HBCUs is the cost yeah. of HBCUs, right? Most of them, if not all of them, are private institutions. And so they don't have the same private institution financial support. I didn't know. I thought they were all public, to be honest with you. I didn't know. No, that. they're all like, so So they're all part of like, not all, but uh, most of them are like former land, land, what they call them, land grant schools, mm -hmm. right? Um, but over time, they're they're not publicly funded. Okay. They receive some federal grants. I'm okay. sure you hear over the years, yeah. like every now and then the president will yeah. write them in for some funding, but most of them are still considered private institutions, right? Yeah. Um, and so with that, there's a specific cost. Like there's not an in-state tuition versus an out-of-state. Okay. Usually it's like, this is the fee for it. Okay. It costs this amount of money to go in, right? And we're a small school. We don't have a lot of donors. So we don't have this pot for you. So if you can't afford it, see what the feds can offer you, get some scholarships yeah. um, versus like a, you know, of course this is going to be the cream of the crop, but versus like a Harvard, Yale, yeah. who, you know, they have this humongous pot yeah, they, of they money. Has, they got the endowment that can probably walk yeah, out. Yeah, they can dead. take care of you. So if you come in, we got you. If you can make it in. Yeah. It's like a hard like, way to. Why are you even paying tuition a hard right? They should yeah, be choice for what? Free. Right. And I wish, I don't, you know, I don't know if we'll ever get there. So part of my work, I worked for the city for a while. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with Seattle Promise. It's a two-year um, free college program. Um, I do hope at some point we move into a space where post-secondary education is like K-12, yeah. where it's free, right? I, I do think that I hope that's the next stage of education. It probably won't be because we still live in a an elitist kind of yeah. society, right? And I think folks have connected college with um, privilege, right? So, so you don't just get to go to college. You have to prove that you should be in college and you have to earn the right to be in college, especially these top tier handful of colleges. Um, and so I don't want just anybody in it. I don't, you know, if you can't afford it, if you don't have the grades, you shouldn't be part of the upper echelon, upper tier of society. And I think we still look at colleges in that, in that way. What's your take on this? And I'm not, I have no idea if this is true or not. But I know like, like when Deion Sanders with Jackson State, I heard other people criticize like HBCU alumni as not giving back as much as they should. Mm -hmm. I heard stats like maybe 1% give back 2%. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm totally make that up. <laughs> versus like you know like who knows yeah, right like yeah. where's the white school they say like half percent half fifty percent give back you know nah, i don't honestly i think if you i don't know the numbers either i probably should but i don't know the numbers if either. the number if the numbers are more even why do the hbcu alumni it's, get so much criticism so you don't get a lot of alumni across the board mm -hmm. paying or giving back yeah to their hbcus okay. some do right it, it's 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 on an individual level um it's hard to compare the two because now we're getting into societal norms yeah. and things, right? Um, what sort of degrees are offered at HBCUs? And then what are job attainment once you leave an HBCU? Do you have the financial means to reinvest in your HBCU, yeah. right? Um, versus maybe some predominantly white institutions, their alumni base may have the means. Yeah. Um, some Colleges like the University of Washington, you know, on average, they have 38 to 40,000 students every year, right? So their alumni base Way bigger. is going to yeah. be larger yeah. than maybe a HBCU that yeah. has an enrollment of 4,000, 5,000 a year, right? I'm just, you know, I'm sure some are larger, right? Yeah. There's probably a variation, but I don't know of any HBCUs yeah, if I, if, are 40,000. Like, I don't, maybe 15 is probably yeah. a large one, right? Okay. So, so is it apples to apples? Probably not, no. right? Um, and then there's, so I, I think certain HBCUs, absolutely, they get a, a lot of alumni uh, donations. This Probably like my, Howard, Florida a those I would like say so Howard, a Morehouse. Um, probably Spellman. Spellman, right? If, if I look, you probably, if we pull up some of those rocks, we'll probably see, okay, there's, there's a significant amount of, 
uh, return yeah. on investment of alumni. Your smaller ones, maybe like your Prairie Views of yeah. the world, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but again, I graduated from the University of Washington. I don't give them. I feel like I gave them enough. So yeah, maybe it's right. a black thing too. I don't know. I'm like, I'll take it there. You don't have to take it there. Yeah, I'll take it there. Maybe, maybe we feel like we gave them enough. We don't give you no more. You got, figure got, it out. I paid, you, I, I paid overpriced. Yeah, yeah, I gave you enough. I paid you in parking. I paid your food. I gave you tuition. Deal with that. That should, that should cover you. That's funny. <laughs> Man, so going back to Madden real fast, right? Okay. Did you have a play in Madden that was like unstoppable? Of course. Which, what was your play? You, I'll tell you, you had, I don't even remember what it was called. I had like four run plays and about four or five pass plays. So you remember Madden, you could set up your playlist, yeah. right? So I would set those plays. I had four, four or five pass plays, four or five run plays, and then I had like three defenses. So if you could if you could figure me out in those, and then I would just flip them. You know how yeah. you would just go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I don't remember. I know one was like I strong, right? Mm. And then I would flip it to the left yeah. if I needed to, right? Um and then, man, most of them were like the passing games were deep cross routes. Yeah. yeah. And you would just throw your extremely fastest guy, whoever the fastest guy on the team was. I don't care what his hands were. You just threw him over there. And then you just threw the ball in the air. And then they caught it. And yeah, his touchdown. Mine were, were Deion Sanders with the Cowboys. I, I played them right. I put a receiver. Oh, you put him everywhere. You're that guy. Yeah. 50 yards out. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out who's a slower cornerback. Imagine gets a slow cornerback yeah. him and just run the face. Just go all every day. Every single time. Touchdown. All day. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't like you. I would. <laughs> uh, and then on defense, like, then if I saw someone doing that, then I'd have to play safety. Uh -huh. And it was like, okay, I got to fall all the way back. Yeah. yeah. That was a cheat code. Yeah. So for, for my, my, my opinion, right, like recently, Every cat I know that just graduated from college, like last three or four years, none of them is doing whatever job they get has nothing to do with the degree. Okay. Are you are you seeing the same thing or that's a tough question? Um I don't know if I see it that way per se. Um, but it is a challenge. Or I've seen people who did do whatever their degree was, um, and now they're shifting gears. Right. So recent, recently I ran to a friend of mine. Uh, he went to law school all the way through law school, been a lawyer. And he's like, I'm done. This guy's like in his thirties. So you can imagine how much time you spend, right? Cause you got to do the K-12. Then you got to do the four or five years of undergrad. Then you got to go to law school. Right. So what are you in your mid twenties before you even start practicing? You spend all that time and he's like, I'm done. I think I want to do something else. Right. So I think it was to your point earlier. I don't know if we were talking here. Or if it was a conversation we we're having before this, where part of college is the experience of getting to know other people. Right. So um, a lot of times in our community, we're told if you, you go to college, you get a job. Like that's the goal. Right. So we have this, this one track mindset, which is, I want to do this thing, right? Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, you know, botany, whatever it might be, right? And I'm going to do this thing um, because I feel like that's what I liked when I was in 11th grade <laughs> or something, right? You know, what are you, 16, 17, trying to make lifelong decisions? Then you go to college and you start taking these classes and you're like, um, I don't know, but I told myself I'm going to do this thing, so I'm going to keep going. Yeah, I can't quit. I can't give I, up. I'm going to be a quitter, right? Or I'm going to disappoint my parents or whatever. Then you get your degree um, and one or two things happen. Either you can't find a job in that field. Either you realize during that process you, you really didn't want to do it, but you just kind of are doing it. Um, or you get old enough and you realize, I want to do something else in my life. Right. I, I have I don't have enjoyment in this particular thing. Um, me, you know, I got my degree. I started electrical engineering. I thought I was going to build robots and send them out to space when I was a kid. Right. That was my thing. Uh, and then I took physics and I was like, no, this ain't my thing. <laughs> I need to find something else. Uh, and so I really liked uh, my African-American studies classes and, and, and really getting into the understanding of just how different peoples came to this country and the experiences that different peoples had while they were here. That intrigued me. I didn't know I was a history buff. I became a history buff, right? Well, when you start, as you said earlier, you start going into the 
social sciences of things, it kind of leads you, there ain't too many paths after that, right? And so, you know, I kind of led myself into education and I've been doing this ever since. So I can say personally, my degree is the field that I'm working in, right? Um, but no, everybody doesn't have that. I know several people that got a degree in something and they building homes right now, right? They're not doing anything related. Um, I got a friend of mine, he, he, he did a uh, business. Then he went into like uh, theology and got his master's theology. And then he was like doing work for corporate 500 business <laughs> as a manager, right? Like nothing related to uh, other than the business piece, but even what he focused on in business and what he ended up doing with that company was not related, right? It was two completely different things. And now he's not even doing that. He's doing his own thing. Yeah, I know someone had got a PhD in microbiology, worked there for three years, got tired of it, become a software developer. Yeah. And she'll say, like, she she solves way more problems as software developers did as microbiology, which is like, I was like, man, had to be a lot of money, like a time effort. I mean, the other thing you have to say, like, but you have to be smart to get a degree in microbiology. Yeah, you do. Right? So yeah, you, you do. can figure anything out, right? Yeah, you do. But I think some of it is, let's say you do get into the space. I had a friend of mine, he was doing chemistry, right? Worked for a company and just didn't feel right doing the work. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you get in it and you're like, there may be too many personal compromises I'm making and I don't feel fulfilled yeah. in this. And again, some of these decisions we're making and we're 17 years old yeah. trying to decide what we want to do for the rest of our life. We ain't even lived life yet. No. Right. And so you get out there and yeah, if you're fortunate enough to actually get in the field, does the field love you back? Yeah. That's right? a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And does your ring not fully form into like your 24, 25? Anyway, so for like boys, for, for, for men, 25. Okay. Um, young ladies, it's, it's sooner. I think it's 18, 19. Okay. Um, so yeah, when the brain fully connects with your cerebellum and it all, so for, for, which is probably why we make a lot of the decisions we make when we're young dudes, Yeah, yeah. because really what it is basically is you are not fully able to connect your actions with future impact. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. And so you base your decisions off of for men, it's what makes me feel good and feel right, right in now. this moment. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, the future and, be damned. And so, yeah. And some scientists, you know, whoever does do these studies, right? Some part, part of the study was because young men had to be the hunters and gatherers. And so if you're too concerned about the future, you're not going to chase down the gazelle. I mean, right? logic, because, yeah, now you're thinking about, man, if I trip and hurt my ankle, you know, and I won't be able to walk anymore. So maybe I don't want to go chase this thing yeah. as opposed to I'm sporadic. I'm in the moment. I need to go get that thing. I'm going to go get it. And whatever happens, happens. And that just is what it is. And so there's some of this physical development based on, I guess, natural need. <laughs> and it decided if we connect that brain too soon, yeah. they're not going to go get the meat. Nobody's going to eat and yeah. everybody's going to starve. So let's let these dudes be dumb until they're about 25, 26. And, and then some of us, it's till our thirties. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Or later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like some people never grow up. Some people, I know yeah. a few of them. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So from your point of view, what should the purpose of college be? Oh, okay. Um, I can break it down. Pretty simple. Number one, network. Network. Um, as you spoke earlier, there's not going to be another moment in your life where you have so many different people from so many different backgrounds in one environment. It just isn't going to be, I don't care who you work for, where you were, maybe the military might be the closest example, but their numbers aren't going to be the same. Um, like I said, the university of Washington is 40,000 students, 40,000 students that have unique stories and different backgrounds. You can meet a lot of people. I met this dude. He was, a um, didn't know this at the time. Cool cat, cool dude. But he was like a Japanese prince, basically. I didn't know. He was just a regular dude to me. We were just talking and, and you know, smart guy too. Smart as hell. Like the dude, he, he completed his calculus series. It was a three-part series. He won one quarter. He took all three of them, completed them, got A's and all. The dude was out of, out of, out of this world, right? Um, 
and we're just chopping it up, just getting to know each other. And he's like, yeah, you know, I came to UW. I really want, you know, there's this, there's this Seattle, Japan connection, right? So he's like, I want to just come here. And as we're talking, he's just telling me his story about his family. They own like all these different hotel chains and, and his lineage is from royalty, right? And so when he goes back, when he finishes college and he and he's done sewing his oil, whatever it is, right? He has to go back and, and run the yeah. family thing. And so it's just opportunities like that, that a little, a little dude from the South end of Seattle, what am I going to connect with someone like that on just a, a regular? So number one, networking. Number two, get to know yourself. Like you're, you go there at 18, 19, you got four or five years, but you're in a safe bubble to explore and get to figure out who you are in life. And it's an environment to which there's a lot of different options in front of you. Right. Um, and so that to me is underappreciated that you get to just be young and dumb and goofy in a somewhat safe space, right? I know things happen and shit, shit happens. I get it. Um, but use that as an opportunity because you're still being taken care of in some ways by your parents, right? There's still some financial aid. I mean, so, so your responsibilities have increased, but they're not life responsibilities for the most part. You know, some people's stories are different, right? But for the most part. Um, and then I would say number three is the education side of things. Like become um, an, a, a learner. One of the biggest things for me that I gathered is I was a terrible student, horrible student in, in high school. And I knew that, but I maintained my horrible student activities in the college, right? And, and what I was missing was the vast amount of information and knowledge that's right in front of me, right? That, that what other environment are you going to get that? These, here, here are the people who are at the forefront of doing the work, the theory-based work in whatever area you're in. If you're fortunate enough to go to a school that's like a research-based institution, like the UW, I, don't, I keep throwing UW out there, but you know, um, where at you know, you're forefront of cancer research, you know, all these things, you're in that bubble. You can learn all of that from the people who are actually doing it, right? And then you've got all these vast libraries. So, so the knowledge base there, but I think, I think we miss that, right? And we get caught up in I just want to get a degree. How's the sports teams doing? You know what I'm saying? Um, so so those that, would be the three. Those isn't is it crazy that kids pick a school based on the, how good the football team is? Oh, listen, man. I've got a friend. I don't know if they're going to see this or not. I hope not. I got a friend. But she's basing her decision off of how close is the Starbucks and other shopping to the school. <laughs> Starbucks was number one, and then other shopping stuff. I was like, that can't be no, your I mean, purpose for a decision of that magnitude. Nice it also speaks to the privilege of which yeah. we've grown to come from, right? So I, I, my kids' experience is almost a 180 from my experience growing up right? So they can make different decisions because they have a different safety net. They have different information, right? So for me, it was, I didn't know I was going to go to college, to be honest with you. Uh, I was part of a program that made me fill out applications. When I got accepted, I, I passed out. I was, yeah, look, and I, and I just filled out the application because they told me, now this is back, so you're back in my time where you yeah. had to like, you had to send a letter to the schools to request the application, yeah. right? And then you waited for that application to come in the mail. Then you filled it out. Then you sent the application in or you faxed it in, yeah. right? And then you had to wait and whenever it showed up. It might, yeah. you know, you wait. And, and if you got the little letter, you knew you didn't get in. If you got the big letter, you yeah. got in, right? Um, and so I think I applied to like four or five colleges. I got into two. Got into two. Um, but it it was it was... It's, it's something like my decisions weren't based on that kind of thinking, right? Yeah. It was like, hey, I'm just applying because someone told me to. So I really don't have that much information about college. Um, B, okay, what kind of programs do they have? What would I be interested in? And then see like what cities yeah. are they in? Like, you know, so I applied. So uh, I'm from Michigan. I was born in Michigan. 
And so I have people in Michigan still. So I was like, oh, I'll apply there because then I can go back to my people. And then I applied to Morehouse, which is in Atlanta, because I'd been there before and I liked it. Right. And then the rest was here in Seattle. Um, but listen to some of my friends and then the, the youth I work with, like their decisions, a lot of it is like kind of strange. Like, so you you're... know, that's that team might not be good when you get there, right? Like yeah. <laughs> it's year by year. You know that, so right? You, so your friend, if if uh North Dakota Tech Institute of yeah, Santa come Bonds, on. Come on. Starbucks in every single room <laughs> that's the you going to. Put it to the top of the list. <laughs> and it's by the mall. It goes to the top of the list. Yeah. That's insane. It is wild, isn't it? Now they're mad, you know, yeah. but this is this is the child they raised, you know. Yeah. God bless them. So this advice I give young people to ask you, right? And like, all our parents are gonna be get mad at me, right? So like if you're like you're trying to get an MBA or go to law school, you know, of course get all A's, try your best, right? Okay. For example, I use like, suppose you take a history class, right? And you have you have an all A's, right? And in order the problem is up in order to get an A for the whole class, get an A, you got to take an A. But if you blow it off and get a C, you blow it off. Let's put all your friends and say, hey, we're going to Vegas for the weekend. Come on. I say, you need to go to Vegas. Come on. You need to go to Vegas. Have an experience. You need to go to Vegas. Now, like I said, if you're trying to get an MBA, doctor degree, whatever, you know, then okay, you need to get an A right or some other circumstances. But like, yeah, I but, even think. But experience is more important to me, I think. I agree. I agree. And you're only going to be 19, 20, 21, yep. but so long. Yeah. Right. Um, so I have a son in college right now, right? And my words to him were have, have an experience. Yeah. Right. Be a student. I'm paying for this thing. Yeah. I'm I'm right? sure here the saying sees that to get degrees. Yeah, it does. Yep. Yeah, it does. And and I think to your point, it it a lot of it depends on what do you want to do, right? Um, so he wants to be a mechanical engineer. I said, Well, the 4.0 mechanical engineer is gonna get paid coming out of college is basically the same as the 2.5. Yeah, have you? I've never seen a a person make a hire or fire someone based on grade point average. It's it's so rare, right now. Now, it, now, if you become magnum cum laude or something, yeah. right? Okay, and you get the little titles to it, and you can attach that to your resume or something. Okay, you might a company, you know, they might might look at you a little differently, yeah. right? But if you graduate from a prestigious institution, they're going to say, "Did you graduate?" Yeah. Yes, I did. All right. Very rare. I, and, and all my work, and I also worked in the post-secondary space. I can say maybe three times do I remember a company really asking about their accumulative yeah. GPA, right? Now, if you want to go into grad school, if you want to get, you know, become a doctor, a lawyer, yeah, because you have to pass, you know, yeah. so there's certain It's more things. competitive. Yeah, right. Um, but in the end, it goes back to my three things, Yeah, right? Networking, figuring out who you are as a person, and then academics, right? You have to juggle all three. I'm not saying blow off academics yeah. like I did. Um, but, you know, it, it, it th I think things got to have priority in place, and, and it has to make sense, right? And so when you... Sometimes, yeah, you got to tell your friends, no, I got to study, right? Now, the, you're there for a reason. But sometimes you got to say, let's go do Vegas, man. Yeah. Like, sometimes just go live, have yeah. an experience, and then come back, and hopefully you do okay on the test. You know, so yeah. those those nights have to happen. You got to have those nights. So here's a funny story for you. When I went back to when I was in college, me and my friend, Shanna Gobos, right? Where I think we're taking a history of Mexico class, history of Russia class, right? right. Had final exams. The test, like, like maybe two in the afternoon, right? And we just happened to meet up like 11 o'clock, right? Just happened to meet. And like, hey, let's go get some lunch, right? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know who it was. It was history of Russia class. We went to a Mexican restaurant. Okay. Got and it. so we got there like 11 15. We started drinking margarita, or whatever. Yeah. Next thing we know, it's 2 30. The class starts at two. We're drunk as shit. We go to class. I have no idea this day what I wrote down. We both got A's. There it is. You did the best, you right? Did the best you ever did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no idea. It is crazy like, how that yeah, works, yeah, right? What the hell? What the hell's going on? I don't even know what I wrote. It is crazy how that works. But then the times where you spend all this time, oh yeah, stressing out, you know, everything. you know, and you're reading everything and you're highlighting stuff and you do all your notes and you feel you're ready. And then you get to that test and you sit down. And you're like, I don't just understand. Boom, just brain lock. I can't. What is going on? Right. And, and so you have those moments, right, in college. And I think. Yeah, I don't I don't know. There's not a right answer, right yeah. way to do it. It's just one of those things where it's like some days you you got it, 
osmosisly and you didn't even yeah. know you knew it. And then sometimes you spent so much time studying for it and working and going and your brain is probably tired. And then yeah. when you show up for the People test, realize your brain does get tired. It does. It does. You need rest and stuff. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And, as, and when you're young, you don't really think about rest. No. You compromise sleep when yeah. you're young. You're like, oh, I just need like to young. I can sleep when I die. <laughs> Pretty much, right? I just let me just get an hour in real quick. Yeah, I do a quick power nap. Listen, you get my age and you try that, you're gonna be asleep on some couch somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably fall asleep right here. So I have a good networking story for you. What's the honest story? I remember hearing this somewhere where this kid went to college in North Carolina State mm-hmm. and his roommate, like he was struggling to school, right? Like first first me sophomore year, just really struggling, right? Couldn't make the grades, making like D's and C's barely passing. Mm-hmm. Your roommate is like super smart, right? Make all A's, like doing all these awards and stuff, you know. And so the son called the dad, hey, dad, you know, like, I'm going to transfer to a junior college close to home, right? Because I, I feel like I'm wasting your money. Yeah. I'm making bad grades, whatever. And the dad said, son, I'm not paying you to make A's. I'm paying you to be around people like a roommate. There you go. That's, I'm paying that's that money it. to be around people like their roommate, right? Yeah. I'm like, damn, that's it right there. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Because that roommate is going to potentially. Yeah. Maybe they own a business mm-hmm. later down the line, right? Or maybe they're the CEO of a business down yep. the line. Or maybe they're the mayor. Or, you know, whatever it is, and I'm not saying a good grades equate success, because yeah, yeah. there are people with bad grades that end up being successful yeah. in this space. Um, but yeah, it's that idea, like, and we get so caught up in the score, yeah. in those grades, in the, right, that, again, we lose what I think is the purpose that you're there for, which is that networking thing. There are people you are going to meet that are your age or close to it, that at some point are going to become the next something, Yeah. right? Um, and if you know that person, then you have an opportunity and vice versa, right? You can work with each other. I can, there are still some people I went to college with, they're on my board now, right? Like it's, it's, it's wild to see how we have grown and now I'm looking at them as pillars of the community. Will you be part of my board? Yeah. Right. Which then I ask you, will you fundraise and will you? Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, let me connect you to this person. Like, I've gotten so much more. What's the old saying? It's who you know, not what yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. You get so much farther with folks, you know, and we all get that. We all understand that. Right. We all like if we go to the party. You know, if we're, if we're trying to go to the club, you know, anybody who's at the door, do you know, like we get the concept of it's who, you know, Yeah. because we don't want to wait in line at the club. Right. No. It's cold outside. It's raining. I'm trying to get right in. I'm trying to get a table like we get it on the on that level. When it comes to this other side, it's the same thing. Yeah. Right. In that space, the folks who because college is still, as I said, it's this hierarchical. It's it's this elitist space. Right. And so when you are there, there's still this idea, like I'm in college and I'm going to complete this thing. And then I'm going to go on be the next senators or leaders of, of men and women. And, and our folks identify in this space that, yeah, be there, get to know folks, meet folks. I mean, I've, I've been fortunate enough, you know, for what I've had, I've had a good run at this thing. And a lot of it is I met people in college and before college, but You know, you'll be surprised, like like sports, right? Okay, if you're if you are at a larger institution, some of these folks might go professional. It's cool to hang out with people who are professional athletes. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to be able to say, "Oh man, I'm gonna be in town. Can I get some tickets?" Right? Yeah, I got you. Where do you want to sit? We can put you in this section. Cool. And then you get to front like you're the cool guy with your crew. Because you got everybody tickets at the, at the at the Mavericks game or something, right? Like it's things like that. That if I didn't have college, there's certain opportunities in life, certain things in life that I would I would not have been able to do. So, suppose you talk to a group of people, fifteen to twenty five. What would you tell them? The, the, some of the top skills they need to have to learn. As far as what, just life skills? Like, yeah. like for me, it'd be public speaking and sales. Yeah, um, definitely public speaking. You know, there's, there's, we grew up with a fear of that. Isn't it something that says like people are more scared of death and skydiving than public speaking? Yeah, yeah. Because I think when you are, when you put yourself on the stage, you're standing in front of everybody, um, you expose yourself, yeah. right? 
and you don't want to sound foolish. You don't want to look foolish, right? So there's this, some folks have this built-in fear mm -hmm. of failure or, um, but yeah, I've found I, in my life, I've had to, and any, anything that I've done, I've had to have the speaking engagement yeah. thing, right? Because even if you have an idea, you have to be able to promote your idea. Yeah. Right. No matter what it is, you got to promote no your idea. No matter what it is. You have to sell yourself. Yeah, no matter what, right? Even if you're just speaking up for yourself, you have to be able to engage others and, and articulate what is inside of you so others can understand and believe and feel your passion, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I would say public speaking. Um, that's a good question. Um, be honest. It's a good one. Just honesty, right? Yeah. It's honesty, tough. be authentic, be yourself. Yeah, be you. Yeah. That's what. That's it. And be honest is be you. And 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 I think we live in fear, in a lot of ways, how we move in life. And it's until we get older, we become um, as men. We get that grumpy old man, you know. And it's like we don't even care. Anymore. I don't care what you <laughs> think about me. I don't care. I'm a. I'm a wear what I feel like wearing. I'm a do what I feel like doing. Right. Because you have reached a place in your life where you're starting to be comfortable with you. Yeah, that's a big thing too, yeah. Yeah. And you see, at least for me, there's more doors that open, right? Um, so yeah, I would say figure out who you are and then get comfortable in that. Stop, stop. And I see it with youth. I don't know if we had this problem as much. I'm sure we did, but social media is killing our kids because yeah. they think everybody is cooler than them. Right. Or everybody's got the, the whatever. Right. Um, no, they don't. They just they front most of them. Um, yeah, honestly, public speaking. Um, I think the other thing is in, in I, I think I like respect people's time. Oh, man, I'm so big on that. Respect people's time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, I know that's that we, we can get into cultural conversations right um about the value of the euro time and and you know what do i mean by respect people's times right but i think there's something to like yeah folks are gonna be late sometimes i get yeah. that but it's you're holding somebody else up from doing whatever they need to do because they're waiting on you yeah right and so just understand and then be open and honest my people, my 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 black folks, we like to say on oh, about five minutes, right? Everything is five minutes. And, you, and just knock out the like, bed. Right, come on. <laughs> just knock out the bed. <laughs> you almost here? Oh, yeah, five minutes. It's like, dude, you ain't even turned the light on in the bedroom. Yeah, you ain't brushed your teeth. You ain't did anything. You're going to be about an hour, right? And so just understanding that, I think, over time, you you get to, I sound old, man, having this conversation, but you look back and things do move quick. You remember when yeah. the old heads would tell you, it happens fast yeah. and before you know it, right? So when I say value time, it's not so much like be here at once or make sure you're supposed to be here at once, be here at 12, 45 yeah. kind of thing. That's part of it. But it's also recognizing that there's not a lot of it, yeah. right? This thing goes. And so understanding that all moments are important, the present is important, right? And so if I'm not honoring your presence, then it's 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 I'm almost being disrespectful to you. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, I would say, you know, there's probably a ton more. I'm sure when I leave here, I'm being in the car. I'm like, oh, I should have said this. Yeah. But those those three are pretty good. Public okay. speaking, honoring people's time and then be authentic to yourself. My thing is like, like, suppose you have a company and the meeting is every Friday at 1 p.m. And some random person is arrives at 130 for six straight times, right? Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, once in a while, yeah, you know, even you get the 105, 106, yeah, that's fine. But man, I'm cool with that. Every, yeah, I late, can work with that. Like 20, 10, 50 minutes every time. Yeah, that's just disrespectful. People on their own time, I think. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're on TikTok, but I'm there quite a bit. This lady posted a, a, a TikTok talking about, uh, what's, what does she call it? Like time lateness is a disability. Like you, if people <laughs> are late, you should hold them to the standard because they have something else going on, whatever. And of no. course, you know, people blast her and stuff like what, what's going on, right? Yeah. Being late is not a disability. No, no. Now, now we've got, I'll, I'll be the guy for you. We got, we got CPT, right? We got our color people time. Um, 
No, it's just get up, man. You know what I'm saying? You know you got to be somewhere. You can't yeah. wait until the last. I do it sometimes, too, even though I'm sitting here talking about times of importance, yeah. man. I, I'll be like, oh. and you know, I found it. It's, it's something was funny as I moved closer to where I work, I became later. It's funny how that works, right? right? Because you yeah. lie to yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, around the corner. It only takes like 10 minutes. I got, okay, yeah. I'll leave here 15 minutes, yeah. right? And then it's like, oh, I got eight minutes to get there. Let me run out the door. Whereas when you're farther away, you know, okay, it might be traffic, might be all these things. So I got to leave an hour before or whatever. Right? It is wild how I've gotten closer to the work, but I tend to be a little bit later getting in. Now, thankfully, I run my own business. So yeah. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's yeah. going to fire me. But then, and, and you know, there's work from home. That's helped a lot. But, yeah, there is that that weird kind of, I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's procrastination or whatever it is, but there is that weird space where it's like you lie to yourself about how much time it takes to get somewhere just so you can, I don't know, what are we doing? Getting two more minutes of sleep or yeah. just walking a little bit slower, like whatever it is that we do, we should be like, come on, let's get this thing going. It's funny. So I show off telling you about the shy at our side of Chicago, me and my wife, we've been here watching, right? And this one episode, the guy, the father's named Darnell, his son's named Emmer, right? And so this guy calls Darnell on the phone. Hey, I'm broken down. Can you come get me? Right. Mm. And he said, I'll be right there. Like, so the next episode, not the same as the next episode. <laughs> he still hadn't gotten there. <laughs> so, so he's like, man, where you at? Like, uh, I'm, 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 around, the I'm right around the corner and, and, yeah. the, and the son says dad that's an hour away <laughs> yeah yes yeah so that's my brother I got an older brother that is him 1000 percent he's either five minutes or he's right around the corner we let it say right around the corner I don't even make any sense ain't no corners like, around like, here but like, we, which corner yeah which one are you which, cover, which one are you right around because I'm looking at him right now You're not I don't see you <laughs> right yeah, so that's him. He's right around the corner. Depending on which one he tells you, one's either an hour or one's two hours. Yeah. Right. So five minutes is an hour. And then right around the corner is about two hours. So just, you know, you can almost set your watch to it. Like, okay, I know what this means. Basically, it means I called you, you forgot, or, <laughs> you know, you were doing whatever. Yeah. And you'll get to me when you get to me. But yeah, yeah that's Amazing. You know, you start to know some of those people too. And then you get to a point where it's like, okay, um, if I need you there at three, I'm going to tell you two yeah. or one. Yeah. Right? And that's, that's my point. Like we shouldn't yeah. have to do those yeah. kind of things. Right. It, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, it's just, I, I can't think of another word other than disrespectful. Right. It's, yeah. it's just not honoring my importance. Or, or, or like the, the get together, the barbecue birthday party starts at, you know, six. So people don't start arriving at seven, you know. Come on, you know that because what? Because we know the barbecue ain't gonna be ready. Yeah, you right? know that that kills me too. When, to me, when someone says, "Like the barbecue be ready at six, uh -huh. the price are six. That should be to me. That means that everything's done at six, right? It should be. Yeah, but it never works like no, that. it doesn't. Never works no, like it that. doesn't. Yeah. What it, what it, like you, what it, you get a six fifteen does not bring the meeting. Look what it like, means. You're lucky. You're lucky if you got that. <laughs> what it means yet. is, hey, where's the charcoal? Does yeah. anybody know where to has anybody cleaned the pit? Yeah. The, <laughs> so it's six o'clock and you just now cleaning and looking for charcoal. That's yeah. usually what that means, right? Yeah. And then folks are sitting there with sides. It's like, do I put my sides in the fridge? Yeah. Do I just leave it on the counter? Yeah. That's that's yeah. So and then you got to know who those people are. Yeah. Right. So you got to know your people well enough to know the six o'clock means six o'clock, or does it mean eight? Yeah. Right. If you get there at six, you really just gonna be there talking, yeah, and playing games. Or worse yet, they're gonna put you at work. Or you, you, you either want to you go pick up, you right? Or you gotta clean the grill, <laughs> or set the table, or or run to the store because they didn't forgot the buns or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. So talk about your time at, as a director of Seattle Mesa, and what what is is, is it called Mesa? Mesa. Mesa. Yeah. What is Mesa? Does so, the MESA stand for something? It does. Okay. Uh, Mathematics, Engineering, Science, Achievement. So funny enough, uh, the program has been in Seattle since, man, like the 80s. And this is a nationwide program? It is. Mostly on the West Coast. Um, but, but they have some, um, what do they call them? Uh, some state offices in, in the East Coast, a handful. But it's mostly here. It started in California, and it kind of stayed around this area. Um, and so funny enough, in middle school, I was in the program. And so it really is geared towards 
getting young people, young people of color in particular, um, interested and exposed to engineering. So this is before STEM was a thing, right? Um, so, so they were STEM before STEM. And they would, in your seventh or eighth grade, you'd take a Mesa class. It was, it was part of your math class. Um, and you would do like hands-on activities, be exposed to engineering um, careers and opportunities, and then college. So that was my first time having conversations about college. Crazy enough, my mom worked at the UW, and I still really didn't think about college. All right. Um, and so sophomore year, stayed in the program, got a scholarship. I was like, this is cool. So they helped me gear myself towards college because I really thought college was for like sports. I'm just going to be honest with you. And you got to be super smart. You have to be super smart, 4.0, 15, 60 on the SAT or good in sports. I was okay in sports. I wasn't great. And I wasn't the best student, right? Okay, let's go to college. While I'm in college, um, I was in uh, this engineering program at the college. It, it, it's called MSEP, similar, but it's at the college level. Um, math, science, engineering programs, what that stood for. Um, and I did an internship with the city of Seattle in their engineering department. All this is leading to the. So fast forward, I get they 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 let go of folks at the city of Seattle. I had graduated college and I was looking for something to do. So I was a middle school coordinator, um, or excuse me, a middle school counselor at two of the middle schools here. And then that was up. And then Mesa just happened to be looking for a middle school coordinator. So I took that role in Mesa and it was kind of this weird life circle where I started the middle school part. Now I'm leading it. Um, and then the director at the time, uh, Anna Maria De La Fuente, she was transitioning back to the Seattle school. So she was a Seattle school teacher and she was the director. Um, position opened and I took over as the director. So I was the director there for probably two, two, three years. I think I was with them a total of four or five years and two or three of that was the director. That to me was the, so I was young, right? I was like, just like 28, 30 as a director, right? Um, it was a career eye-opening opportunity for me because it was the first time I actually had to manage adults. And I learned so much in that time of not just the business side of running an organization, but also how do you support, supervise, and manage, if that's the right word, adults. Because I got into a work to work with you, right? Like I want to support young folks. Then you take over these administrative roles and responsibilities and you realize adults got issues, man. And you got to, you got to figure out how to manage grown folk in the workspace. So it was a huge lesson for me that I've taken so many career um, nuggets from during that time that actually, you know, we're talking 15, 16 years ago that I still use to this day that's helped me be the director that I am now. Um, but yeah, the program was a, it was a strong program. I'm not too familiar with how they're doing now. Um, but it was a statewide program and they had different, had six different centers throughout the state. We were the Seattle one. We were housed at the University of Washington. We supported middle school and high schools in the Seattle area. Um, and it really was about college and career exposure and access as it related to engineering and math and sciences. And then by the time I took over, STEM was a thing. So you know, it was, it was this STEM thing, but Mesa was doing that and having those conversations way before this, this movement of STEM. Um, so this is a kind of joke, but it's not, I'm an HR. I like to say like, you need great people to have a great company. Yeah. Have a comma. Most of them fucking suck. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's something that I was, um, 
I don't know. I, I think I was watching some clip on YouTube or something, right? And it's 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 a wild clip where it was like, we pray and pray and ask our friends to pray for us to get a job, mm-hmm. right? It's like, I really want this job. I applied for it. I can't wait. You guys pray for me. Then how the, oh, the interview went great. I might get it, right? And then when they get the job, they hate the job. They can't wait to 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 go on vacation, to not show up, to call in, right? It's all these things. It's like, well, you really asked for this thing. You got it. Now you don't want it. You're trying to figure out how to get out of it. And it's it's tough um, because as you know, right, which is why HR exists, because there is this component of, I can, I can have the greatest interview process that yeah. ever existed, right? Whatever, all the feedback, over a hundred years of interviews, I take all the feedback and I create the ultimate interview process, onboarding process, right? It's still people, yeah. right? It's like, it's like, I always equate it. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe you're going to tell me not to, but I equate it to like dating in a way, right? So, you know, people can, there are good interviewers, right? There are good people who will show you a face on the date and make it seem like oh, say the right word. This is the best person I. Yeah. yeah. And then six months down the road or a year down the road, you really get to know that real person. Yeah. And you're like, man, this is a mistake. I hired the wrong person. Well, I'm dating the wrong person. I should have should have kicked it with her sister. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I got my HR certification like a few years ago. Right. The instructor gave, gave us an example. Right. How people compare themselves in a bad way. So this lady was getting paid, I'm making this up, of course, like $40 an hour, right? Okay. I only had to work like a total of 10 hours a week. So of course, she had to go into work every day, but actually only worked 10 hours a week, right? Mm. The rest of the time, she was bullshitting the paper, having a good time, whatever. Sure. She quit because people were working less than her, and she thought it wasn't fair. That's crazy, isn't it? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Some of it sometimes is like the audacity. Yeah, that's a good word for it, yeah. You know? Um, and I've noticed that more post-COVID. Right. So there was a culture in, in, in most places, every workplace is obviously unique. Right. But most places it's Monday through Friday. Yeah. You're expected to be in from this time to this time. Right. Um, OK. COVID happened. You were home. Now folks are saying, well, come on back. Right. We're done. Come on back. And now it's almost this. How dare you ask me to come back? Yeah. Right. We shouldn't have to. We've we've been able to maintain this thing for so long why are you asking me to come back right and it's just it's an interesting thing with when you deal with humans man yeah and it is and and what they expect because we know the other side of what it means to run the business right like they they i've been they so you know i can't i'm i'm speaking and someone who's been in their role too whereas i do my job i want my paycheck yeah right and Unless you tell me I'm not doing a good job, I expect my paycheck. I, I have these expectations, right? Now, we, as the leadership, have expectations also that you're going to do your job. Yeah. And, and you're going to show up on time and yeah. these other things, right? Um, but if we don't handle it accordingly and inform you that you didn't do your job right and in this process and this timely manner, you know, it kind of ties our hands to what we can do. So we still got to give you your paycheck, yeah. right? Um, but you don't know on the back end, like we're trying to make it happen. We're figuring it out. We're trying to struggle. Um, sometimes I don't get paid and I hear you complain or see, it is a tough pill to swallow when you're the business owner Oh yeah, because of the sacrifices you make so that in some ways they stay ignorant, right? Yeah. They're, they're able oh, to, yeah. Yeah. to just, Hey, it's payday. Here it is. Or when I show up to my desk, my desk is there. The, there's not a chain on the door saying we're evicted, right? There's certain things that they take for granted. And when you're over here busting your ass and then you see someone who's not yeah, and then tough. complaining, yeah, you're like, all right, man, this is, but then you've created a system. You have all these policies and what you're supposed to, what you need to, but it's like, they kind of have a little bit of the advantage right in certain aspects yeah yeah like i, I realize you know like you know like people say i'm gonna work remotely and they say like productivity increase or whatever but to me at the end of the day if the company says come in you gotta come in right yeah if you don't like it you gotta find another job go find something else you to know? do like i mean some companies like want to have you in there you know like me personally i like to be remote but i do like to see my people like once a week you know yes 
I don't want, I don't, I don't want to see everyone nine to five, 40 hours a week. That's some bullshit, you know? Yes. But other people want to be there. Like, I think Sam Alman from Y Combinator, like Open AI Company now, he's like, he wants people in the office every day, right? Yeah. It's, it just, and if you don't want to go do a TikTok thing, they're, they're exactly still, right. They're making money on TikTok. Go do that. <laughs> but crazy. yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like sometimes you, as the owner, sometimes I have to check myself like, should I not be asking this? Yeah. Like, wait a second. No, get in. Mm-hmm. Come on in. And we have a, a, a relatively lax environment, right? Um, because I appreciate I, part of what we built. So, myself, Willie Seals, Marcus Harden, when we were building this thing out. Um, there were certain aspects of the work world that we just didn't like. Yeah. Right. And we said, well, we're not going to, you know, we used to do this thing, right. Where, okay, let's say you're supposed to be either from eight to five or nine to five. Right. Well, what are you doing at four fifteen? Yeah. You're staring at the clock. Yeah. Trying to figure out, okay, yeah. is the supervisor gone yet? Like what's yeah. going, you know, so for the next 45 minutes, you're not doing anything. No. You're trying to figure out how soon can you get out? That's of 45 there. minutes. You can, be on the way home or something. Yeah. And so, so we've created a, again, a, a space of fear, right? We create an environment to which I'm not getting a productive staff person. No. Right. So, so our part of our thing was like, do we want an environment to which people are living on fear and they're just hanging around until five and at four 59, 59, they're standing at the door, you know, or do we want to just be honest? Like sometimes just go home yeah. if you, if right now. You don't have, I know you have things to do, but right now it's not the time to start a new project or something, yeah. or, or you got to go get your kids, go get your kids. Like, that's fine. So what do you do in this situation? Like, let's suppose you have your life around it. People come and go as they want, right? Mm-hmm. And they work Monday, Friday, right? Monday through Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Um, no, matter of fact, like, like suppose everyone work remotely, suppose someone said, Hey, I'm taking my kids to this baseball game, come on, all this kind I of stuff. T- we, I know where you're going. Go ahead. And then like Friday at 1 PM, you need some of this person, right? Yep. And they said, I can't, I voted for four dollars a week. I can't help you out. Yes. What so happens? we, we, most of our employees are salaried employees, mm-hmm. right? But it helps. Uh, it yeah. does. Yeah. It, 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 it's so I became a salaried employee. Um, probably, I think when I became the director of mm-hmm. Mesa and I realized the difference in how I felt as a person because mm-hmm. I didn't have to do this timesheet every two yeah. weeks and you know I'm like oh what was I doing on Wednesday at this yeah. time was I really here you know um and I just felt more like respected yeah yeah like you you expect a product from me and you need a product whenever you need it and you expect I'm gonna give it to you right if that means some days I'm doing 24 hours because I'm Wanted to go to the baseball game, yeah. then fine. And the problem between those out there so expect salary workers that work at least 40 hours, right? So that's when, the then that's not that, the case. This, so that's the other thing, yeah. right? And and so it's one of these when you make that decision as a business, you you're, gotta accept both sides. You're saying you're trusting that person. Yeah, that's what you're saying, right? Because because hourly, I can have you do timesheets. You know, remember the old school, you clock in yeah. with the little thing. Um and then that way I know what I'm paying for, yeah. right? I know I, you make X dollars an hour. You work this many hours. Here's your money for your work, right? Salary, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying you actually were working yeah. when you are doing the work. But in the end, it's really, I have a product I need completed. Mm-hmm. So as long as this product is done at the time I need it done, then I'm not, I don't have the questions, yeah. right? So if, if you if you were at the baseball game Monday through Friday and I needed something on, on the, the coming up Monday and you spent all weekend on it, okay, cool. I'll just deal with it, Yeah, right? I've accepted that as part of the thing. Now, to your question, it is tricky, right? Um, my expectations are, though, I will get that thing at 1 o'clock on Friday. Yeah. If, if you cannot, then you need to submit leave. Yeah. And that's kind of where we are. Right. So so if you know you are not available, you go on vacation. Yeah. You got family in town or, or whatever. Or it go is. to the baseball game from one to five and you work from and six to ten. Come on. Then but so many people don't do that. Yeah. They're like I, I work from nine to five. You just took off. You half just took day. off half the day. You yeah. didn't work nine to five. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think so, so many people take it, you know, try to pull that card off or something. Yeah. Well, that gets back to the right now you've hired a human. Yeah. Yeah. And as they get comfortable where they are, 
they start to try to figure out how can and I then push us, this envelope a little bit? Yeah. How can I stretch out? Yeah. And then us humans are going to wonder why AI is going to take all our jobs. Come on, <laughs> man. Yeah. And they get mad because the company is like, well, it's cheaper because I don't have to pay you for, I don't have to pay AI for all these hours. Sick leave, AI needs, no, AI needs no benefits. None, right? And then I don't have to report to labor and industry and pay that a little bit of fee. Like it's all these things that this is the behind the scenes stuff, mm-hmm. right? Now you you may think you make thirty five dollars an hour or whatever it is a year, but to, there's a true cost. Oh yeah, for each employee. Yeah, right. Yep. And that true cost is not what you take home. Oh no, oh no, right? And so what I spend on you is not double but it's it's up there right yeah. um and so yeah i need something out of that and if you're not here and i feel like we created a very good family friendly employee friendly so when you tell me nah i can't make it or i can't then, I, then i'm like wait a minute remember all the birthdays you got off all the yeah, kids things you went to, what all are this, talking this, about? You know? yeah yeah i, I haven't heard from thing. you in two weeks i need yeah. this one thing and you can't on this no, that's not going to work. Yeah. Right. But, you know, it's tough when you've created that environment. So what I try not to do is like, let's say it's 11 o'clock. I'm like, I need something by one. Yeah. Because I know the environment I created. Yeah. Right. Um, but sometimes things come up. Right. And that just is what it is. Oh, yeah. Sometimes things happen. But for the most part, it's like, okay, let's let's be realistic about what we're doing here. We're not trying to trap people. Right. It's like, oh, I'm at Disneyland. <laughs> you know, I can't get it to you. It's like, okay. Um, but there are, there are, there have been some some times where it's like, wait a second, you know you should have submitted yeah. leave for that. You all the way in Hawaii. I know, right? You're not doing no work. And just because you get so so the 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 issue with salary is then like let's say they they hop on for one meeting. Does that count or does that not count? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It gets tricky. Yeah. Here's one for you. So I have a friend. He works at like one of the large corporations here in Seattle. Okay. So what he does, like we know the CEO of the senior, the senior people to come to do a meeting. He, he's a person who's off live streaming across the world, right? Okay. And so he had to hire someone to go in and like put plug, plug the cords in it, right? Yeah. And he was just one person. And the person had the nerve to say he would only take the job if he was remote. So my friend, like, hey, how, you know, like, how are you going to do this remotely? How do you do it? He said, oh, you hire someone else and I'll tell them how to Shut do it. Shut up. Yeah. I said, dude, you're fucking with me. Ain't no fucking with me. No, I get the hell out of here. He said, yeah, he told me like I had a, I should hire someone else to work straight on face. Yeah, straight face. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Now, is this but I know what do you say? The audacity. The audacity. Now, is this millennial stuff, man? I wonder how much of it is like an age thing. Cause I think some of us wouldn't even think. I would never dare to say no shit like that. That's not even an option. You'd be like, okay, shit, I gotta go. So I either take it or I don't. Yeah. Right. I don't think of, hey, why don't we get a third party in here? Mm-hmm. And then you can you can also pay him and I'll just tell him what that's wild. Yeah. That's wild. It's crazy, ain't it? Yes, it is. But we live in some weird times, man, when it comes to and there's probably, you know, every generation says this stuff, right? So probably our folks' generation was like, Oh, these guys are lazy, they yeah. don't want to do anything. Right. But it is really like what folks expect. Yeah. Right. And how they want you to cater to them. It isn't, it is wild. I don't know where the lie was told to them or to us. Yeah. Right. Sometimes I look at what they do and their expectations. And sometimes I'm like, well, how come we weren't doing it? Why didn't we ask for that? What? Wait. Yeah. That makes all the sense in the world. It we should have yeah. been on that. I know. They right? do. And they get some, every generation gets something right and wrong. I yeah. Think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's something, cause, we still, we still were part of that group where it was like, you know, my parent, both of them really, but my dad for sure, like work for one place for yeah. a year. Those right? days are long gone. Yeah, but it, but that's what that's, that's school, how it was back right? Then, yeah. it's, it's that's kind of how they ingrained us. Like, find you a good job, stick with it for 20, 30 years until you till you're done, right? We were that last group that started to see like, yeah, yeah that folks ain't really doing that no more. And the companies ain't taking care of people like they used to. So I don't, I don't feel obligated to stay with them because all they're doing are these 401ks yeah. that I can just yeah. take with me yeah. anywhere I go. Uh, well, Kim, like all these companies, like, you know, they pretty much screwed over people in the pension, right? Yes. And now they're like, oh, no one's loyal. You wonder why. Right. You wonder why. Right. You know? Right. Pensions, it was a, it's a great idea. Yeah. 
my dad, he worked for Boeing for 30 some years. And, you know, I still don't get it though. I don't understand being a business owner, right? Um, I'm a very small nonprofit. Like, why am I going to pay you 20 years after you stop how, working? How, and then how? Yeah. How do you afford that, right? Yeah. But but I think the 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 idea I understand wholeheartedly that you gave so much yeah. for this business to even be, right? You put 30 years into yeah. this thing, right? I'm selling your product. Yeah. And I'm selling it at this nominal rate that I get to be a multi-million gazillionaire, yeah. right? So you should get something off of yeah. that. I I understand it in theory. But in reality, yeah. I'm like, man, that but is a you lot of money. Six, you retired 65, lived 25 more years. And I'm paying you 75% or whatever the percentage of what you last were paid. Like, it's a good ass deal for the yep. for the person. Yeah. It's tough for the business, and which I can understand why businesses move away from that. Right. Um, but you know, then the flip side is they move away from it so they can give their CEO and board yeah. more money, right? It's, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, it's not because they don't have yeah, it's not money. because they were good to have a good heart no no it's not it's not for the betterment of the people or the companies like oh we should do this thing because it's, no it's hey we're gonna make more money if we do this so let's do this right um so i think our teaching of loyalty stick with this thing you know was kind of weaning now we've got this group of folks that's like they're not loyal to me. I'm not loyal to yeah. them. I'm going to give them a year. Yeah. I got a friend of mine. He's worked at like eight different places, eight different years. Yeah. It's like, he, you well, know, you can do that now. who's next? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not married to you. I'm, I'm fine. I guess me next. too. Like companies like they'll fire Jason today. Yeah. But if I don't give him two weeks notice, I'm a piece of shit. Yes. Are you kidding me right now? Absolutely. You, I can fire, get fired on Monday. But right now. Two weeks notice and I'll. No. That works both ways. Yes, that works both ways. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. I think, um, and that two week notice thing, that was all, I don't, I don't even know where that came from. Know, right. But, but it's like this somewhere, this courtesy thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But you're right. It only applies one way. You know what I mean? So if I, if I don't show up tomorrow, mm -hmm. then folks is going to talk bad about me. Yeah. I can't use you as a, as a reference. And, and, and you better catch my pay. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She better. It's on you to catch it's my pay. It's on you. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep cashing checks. I'm not going to pay for it. <laughs> At all. At all. I'm not going to go to the mobile app and say, I don't longer work here. At all. Yeah. But you know, companies, yeah, they'll let you go tomorrow, but there's this expectation that you would treat them right or yeah. something. Um, I got a friend of mine. He's dealing with that right now, right? Where it's like they they, they gave him some warning, but even that is weird. Like there's this weird. It's a weird. You probably understand this way way better than even me. But it's like, what's the sweet spot, right? When 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 do I say, hey, employee, we're looking to switch gears, yeah. um, and so the work that you're doing is going to be a you know it's not really needed anymore. We had yeah. we had this executive team meeting we decided last night that what you're doing we just don't need anymore yeah. right um so we're gonna give you an we're gonna be nice and give you another month or yeah. two months or yeah. three months or four. yeah now it's like well at some point there's this window where if i'm telling you your work is obsolete what is that person doing for yeah a period you of just time? say you know here's three months pay don't i want to see you again right that's what you're saying yeah yeah. And it's, 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 do I string it out and yeah. just keep paying you every two weeks? Yeah. No, I just give you a lump sum. Yeah. Tell you, thank you for your services. Yeah. Right. That's always tough. It's yeah. tough. But I think in those cases, at least you're trying to do right by the person. So which one you want to try next? Oh, okay. We, we still, we still going. Yeah. Um, let me try that Rebecca Creek. This I never one. heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Texas, huh? So what's your take on this? This is my opinion, right? So from my point of view, 80% of people like this, um, you pay them, they're going to pay you $30 an hour. Their attitude okay. is, I'm only going to pay you $30 an hour. I'm only going to do $30 of work for work. Okay. I'm only going to do this. Nothing more, nothing less. That's yeah. what I'm doing. The other 20% of people, they're like, oh, well, I got paid you $30 an hour. I need to provide $6 of value to the company. I need to prove them I'm worth this right. Yeah. What's your take on that? Think the number's too high, too low? I don't think the number matters. Okay. I think it depends who you are as a person. Because the, the truth is, for me, I won't say the truth. My truth is, 
if I take on a, jo a job, a task, I feel like my name is attached to it and I want it to. So be. many people don't believe that. Don't like it, I know. unfortunately. I know. Um, there are some things that you do and you're like, I'm not getting paid enough for this, right? Whatever that this is, right? Now you've decided in your head, I'm not getting enough for these things that I'm doing. Sometimes we do that to ourselves too, right? We take on all these tasks. And then when we step back, we look and it's like, oh, I'm doing all this stuff. Well, you volunteered for a lot of those things, yeah. right? Hoping that maybe somebody will see all the things you're doing and say, oh, let me bless you with more money, yeah. right? That's good luck with that. Um, but I think the person who's like, I'm only getting paid $30. I'm only going to give you $30 worth of work. You can't pay that person enough. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Because they're you always know, gonna be point, like yeah. I've never thought about I'm that. only getting fifty dollars, you know. It, I'm so gonna get a hundred dollars. Yeah, know. I'm only getting a thousand dollars an hour. I'm like, you know, it's this it's so so there's a there's a I believe there's a group of folks out there that overvalue themselves. And I know that sounds crazy. You know, that sounds pretty negative. I don't mean to be negative about it, but it's it's a it's a misunderstanding, um misconception of the tasks and the duties and then who they are as a person right um i'm paying for tasks to be done or i'm paying for your thoughts and problem solving skills right so i'm i and i place a value on it based on what i can afford as a business right so you might say, man, I run all your switchboards. I do, you know, I sell your mics. I should be getting that right now. Folks are getting $100,000 an hour to do that, right? And I'm doing it for 80. I should be, okay, we can have that conversation, right? There's, there's always room to negotiate and have a conversation. But if you take the approach of, well, they're getting 100,000. I'm only getting 80, so I'm not going to do as much as, well, some of it is maybe that business can only give what they can give, right? So you got to make a decision. If you really believe you should be getting paid this, then you may have to leave, yeah. right? And go find that. Um, your hope is when you get that $80,000 person that they're giving you $250,000 worth of work, right? Because they, because they have a sense of value, a sense of pride in the work that they do. I believe in that because I believe that's going to take you much farther in life. Okay. Yes, yes, you need money. I get it. We all need money. Um, but the question, the way you phrased it is to me, it's more about the mentality of the person. Yeah. Right. And now it gets back to what we were talking about of managing adults and humans, right? Because to me, I immediately get this visceral response because it's I can almost visualize what that person is and what I have to deal with and manage because they really feel in some way they're being underpaid or undervalued, yeah. right? And in my head, it's like, nah, and you're not as great as you think you are usually either, right? And then are you comparing yourself to the right thing, right? Like I want to talk about a friend was complaining that she was getting overpaid. Like, what are you comparing yourself to? She, she worked at a nonprofit, I think in Little Rock, Arkansas, right? Mm -hmm. She compared herself to someone doing the same job at Amazon. You're right. Like, let me break it down to you, right? It ain't saying. It's not even, it's not even, it's not even apples and oranges. It's not even. It's, it's, it's like fruit to and steak. Meat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not. And and are you in the same city? Are you different city? Like, it's not non profit the same profit revenue as a company. Thing. It's so many things, different it's things. So, I am an executive director for a nonprofit. Yeah, I would love to make 250000 mm -hmm. I'd be the only one working there. And I'd be serving about four or five <laughs> young men, right? Like, sure. I can look and say, okay, what are other executive directors making? Yeah, there's going to be some that are, you know, quarter of a mil. Yeah. If not more in certain, but I also don't have a almost trillion dollar portfolio. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's, really thinking about it from a space of what makes sense like we were talking earlier you got young people who want to get a social science degree and make eighty thousand dollars why because you heard the computer science kid who got out was starting at 75 80 90 thousand 
Well, yeah, they're going to work for that world where where they're printing money over there. They, yeah. Computer sciences right now is basically they they don't know what to do with money. They're rolling around in this thing, yeah. right? They're trying to figure out how to where, where do I push for that, right? Social sciences, we're on the corner in the tents with the folks asking for money next to them. Like we're trying to figure out who's giving money. Yeah. Right. So I don't have outside of the services we offer, I don't have a tangible product that I can then turn around. I'm not, I'm not selling you a shoe. Right. And then I'm, and then you tell me, Oh, it's hurting my feet. Okay. I can adjust the shoe, sell it. I can have more colors. I can, I can flood the market with it. Right. It's, it's a different kind of business um, that, I'm not saying, you know, when when I went into this, I did want to change the conversation around nonprofits. Because nonprofits are businesses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they sometimes are. Sometimes we forget Just that. Just the text structure right? is changed different, right? It, it's right. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. And then how you generate income, right? Um, but it's still a business. And so I wanted to you know, we're still small. I don't think I've shifted the world yet, but, you know, change the narrative around a nonprofit. It is a business, but you're not, you, depending on the nonprofit, depending on who the financial backers are, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they, they pay their employees well. It's yeah, the richest good. man in the world. Yeah. Like, or it, it's a battle every other year. Like who was the? Yeah. Come on. Like, they probably don't even have to fundraise. No. You know, this this guy, he, he, it's like, okay, instead of giving it to the government, I want to do my own special projects. I put it in the foundation. It's a tax write-off. Cool. Well, damn, okay, I made $800 billion this year. I, I got to put like $5 billion into this thing just to make it look like, that's not the world I live in, right? That's not the world most nonprofits live in. That's a whole different world. Yeah, you got to fundraise, you, basically. Hey, just say beg for money. You basically like a beg for money, probably, you know. In, in a way, that's what it is. Yeah. In a way, that's what it is. You know, it took me a long time, though, to accept that. And I don't know if it was a pride thing or what it was. Again, this is a lesson learned working for Mesa because um, they're a nonprofit, right? Even though they're a house at the University of Washington, still a nonprofit. And so what I learned was this. It's... There's there's folks out there who have money. We do happen to live in a in a wealthy state, a wealthy city. I mean, yeah. it, it it just is, right? There's a lot of tech money here. There's a lot of Starbucks money here. There's Boeing money. There's a lot of people with money. Try to see there's money. Yes. You don't forget that try to see is like a billion dollar fish company. Yes. Up in Dallas. yes. Like just the whole um locks and everything down there in general, right? Like, like Seattle is uniquely positioned. Yeah. However it happened, I don't know, something in the rain, something out <laughs> here. We got Amazon, Starbucks, Microsoft, you know, the, there's a list of... You made a good point. If someone would have said, all these multi-million-dollar companies were replaced with the sun only shines like two days a year, we'd be like, get the hell Who's out of here. Who's doing that? Yeah. No one's signing up for that, <laughs> right? But then you look up and it's like a port city, yep. right? You've got Boeing. You, you've got a lot of the major players that are global businesses yeah. right i'm gonna say of course there's others right yeah. i'm not but there's a significant we, in we, this we small have, little town we have like iconic it's kind of worldwide corporations everyone the world knows starbucks everyone the world knows amazon microsoft you know boeing like those four by themselves like it's it's it was a world changer company yeah right um so there's a lot of people here. Long, the point of my story, there's a lot of people with money around here. Yeah. Um, and so what you end up happening is it's not begging as much as it's connecting. I don't want to say it's 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 connecting the two wants together, yeah. right? So uh Cavness HR is now a billion dollar company, right? You at some point have to decide, do I want all of that going to Uncle Sam or do I want to have, my heart is in, I don't know, cats. Yeah. I love cats. Yeah. And I just want to be able, I'm finally in a position I where I can- I want cats to live forever. Ever. 
Right. What am I have to do? Who's 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 helping cats? Anybody yeah. here helping cats? Let me pay these scientists a million dollars an hour. Yeah. And so you got to be bold enough to raise your hand and say, I'm helping cats. Right. So we're linking up because you don't have the knowledge base yeah. to do whatever to their DNA to help them live forever. But this person who's been studying it for 25 years does. But they don't have no money. They broke. Right. You say, I can give you the financial backing to do the research you need to do. Just go do your research and then report to me annually. And so that's how I learned. Yeah, it's begging is tough. And that's how I looked at it. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's really connecting the two wants, right? The two needs. Like you might really want to impact the community that you grew up in or your 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 old high school. We talk we are talking about do people give back to their colleges, right? Well, some of these colleges around here, the way they are, that they are, because a lot of these folks went to these colleges. And they're like, well, here's here's ten million dollars, but just put my name on the building. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, it becomes some of that where there's a whole industry. There's a there's a whole career field designed for people to ask wealthy people to give money yeah. to these things. My wife does it. This so is what a, she does. Skill set. It is an, absolutely a skill set to say, what do you want, Jason? You want, you love animals. I got a nonprofit over here that works with animals. I just need to connect you to their executive director. Y'all go have lunch. You can talk. And then I'm a, I'm gonna set it up, and by the time you leave lunch, you're gonna be like, "This is the greatest organization ever." I'm cutting checks, right? And that's the business of nonprofit. It's not so much in the tangible thing per se, but it's we make an impact. But I can't make an impact without you, right? And and you you agree in the way I do my impact and and who or what I'm focused on. I just need you to help me because I need to hire more staff or we need to build a bigger building or whatever it is, right? Because it's still a business. I still have to pay taxes. I still have to pay employees. I still pay rent. Yeah. We still need um, paper for the copy machine <laughs> and ink, right? Like all of these things, none of that changes. You can't say I'm a nonprofit. They uh, just on everything. No, some people give you a little 10% discount, but they still need their money because they're a business too, right? And so- it, it's it's one of those things where if we looked at nonprofit a little bit differently, um, it might change some things, right? It's almost like education in a way, right? Where people do a lot of work and they're underpaid. They're underpaid. Um, but some of that is what it is. And so if you, if I got into the business of social work, if I thought I was going to be a millionaire, I'm tripping. Yeah. You know, I'm just, you know, not. Unless you're doing some crooked, illegal shit. Or I, I stumble across the key. I figured it out. Yeah. I figured out how to get folks out of poverty. I figured out how to make the cat live forever. Right. And then I can sell that. Yeah. So that that then becomes the um, for profit side of nonprofits. Right. So in our space, let's say I was to figure out how to really help because uh, we work with young men of color. Um, in particular, black males. So how do we transition and get all young black men to complete their um, algebra by ninth grade? Because failing algebra, not completing algebra by ninth grade, you have a 50% higher rate of not completing high school overall, right? But guess what? ACE has figured it out. Well, okay, I can sell that. I can put together that little package, the curriculum, and I can go from state to state, city to city, county to county. And I can say, this is it. Here's the, here's the master plan. You do this, these young men will improve, right? But unfortunately, in social work, it's, it's not really a, a, a magic pill or some kind of thing always that, that, that you can sell like that. Now, there are things. People sell books. People sell curriculum. People sell, you know. There is a there is a for profit kind of mentality sometimes in nonprofit space of of selling an idea and, and having people pay for the idea, um, but for the most part it's services. Do you believe in my services? Do you value my services? And are you willing to pay us so we can continue these services? And then every now and then I'll put your name on a program or something, and <laughs> you know. <laughs> When I stand up in front of everybody, I say, well, thank you to Cabinet's HR for 
you know, sponsoring this, I don't know, event. You know what I mean? So let's talk about human channels for a minute, right? So go from the beginning of time, you know, man, you know, create a fire. You create how to do wheels. Mm -hmm. We forgot how to ride horses, printing press, you know, shell ships, you know, recently fly planes, mm -hmm. you know, AI, whatever. Do you think, obviously tech, I'm, I'm trying to fire us up as tech, right? Obviously tech has advanced so greatly. It's advancing more and more every go, you know, mm -hmm. like part time I go to Mars and stuff. Do you think human intelligence is like kept at the pace or is a human back in year 20,000 BC as smart as a person now? Has human intelligence uh, actually improved or is this a tech piece? I think that's an interesting question. I don't think intelligence so it's different. So, so I think smart is relative. Um, you can be smart. You know, HR a thousand times better than I do. So you can, you can speak HR and I'll be like, damn, this dude is hella smart. Right. But there might be something that I know that you're like, ah, oh, I don't know anything about that, but I'm, I, and you know, in my head, it's like, oh, this guy's dumb. If I just met you, like, I don't know shit. He doesn't know anything. What the, what the hell are you doing? Right. I think intelligence, though, is I don't think intelligence has improved. I think we've always been intelligent. I think intelligence to me is like science, meaning your intelligence shows itself relative to the tools you have available. Science is as good as the tools you have to use. Um, the human now probably was the human before we just only had access to rocks and stones. And then once we were able to fix those rocks and stones into things, we were able to elevate our game to something else and something else. Right. Um, doesn't mean we were dumb because or non-intelligent because we didn't speak language like we do now. We had a different, you know, we might've been grunting or something i don't know right but that's still language right um so i think we just have better tools now it's almost like when you look at old movies and you try to compare them to the movies now or you have your the special effects and stuff yeah right you can see the string sometimes yeah. on the on the star trek <laughs> yeah so it's like and then you try and have your kids sit down and you're like, oh no, you're gonna love this. The movie. kids look you side eye like, you're like, you used to watch this. Though? What is? This? You were scared of this. This guy with a glove on and some. <laughs> you don't see the screen, Dad. <laughs> like, come on, this dude doesn't even look burnt. Like he wouldn't be like that. How come his shirt isn't burnt? Like this dude is crazy. And and it's like, I think we have. You know, it's 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 fascinating that you asked me this because my grandma passed some years ago. Um, both my grandmothers lived to be in their nineties. And my grandmother, my mother's side, was born, ironically, was 1914. And um, I never really asked her specifically. I wanted to, and I didn't. You know, it's one of those things when you look back. But can you imagine how things have changed for her? Yeah. Right? You grow up with horse and buggy. No electricity, probably. Right. You know, no indoor dirt plumbing. roads. That's the norm. And people don't realize like electricity has only been around 100 years. And not just electric, but electricity for the masses for consumption, right? 150 years ago, people were like, yeah. It was a different. foolish man's idea to think yeah. that they could have a light on every street corner yeah. that you can flip a switch. Yeah. It was, it was uh, whale oil, mm -hmm. and, right? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean those folks, did. so so my, my interpretation on that is it doesn't mean those folks weren't intelligent. They just didn't have the tools. I mean, like the right? Romans built the aqueducts that took water everywhere, you know? Yeah. There's so much if you things look in at, the past where people did like, like amazing things that, so we can't that we can't replicate. You you get me into like, okay, so so not a conspiracy theorist kind of person, but, you know, I watch my alien shows and stuff, right? <laughs> and so you start looking at like the um, Egyptian pyramids the Aztec pyramid, like all these things. And you ask yourself, how? Yeah. Like, right. Like, so here we are in 2023 and, and that's fine. We don't have to believe in aliens on this. This I know that's not what this format is, but right. But how? Because there's a level of intelligence that we don't have. Yeah. 
to be able to do and build those things in the way that they built them to do what they do, right? So when the light hits them, it does certain things that you and I couldn't do that. If we wanted to do that no. today, we couldn't go to the beach and build. We can barely build a little, <laughs> a little beach. Yeah, castle. I know there's a theory out there talking about conspiracy theory, like when the there's a library in Alexander had like all the wars information back in the day burned down on all, all the information yep. got lost. I've heard that before, you know. Yeah. But like, I've never been there. The pyramid, like I've heard like stones, like like thousand of tons each one right yeah and even had like a thousand men like how did how did you do it yeah because and so and so you know some of the conversations like even with today's tools yeah right today's machinery it would be a challenge and not only just a challenge but the way some of these things are placed the precision that some oh, yeah. of these things are placed how and so so some knowledge was lost yeah, somewhere or the aliens kept right. us out. Well, whatever it is, right? <laughs> so somewhere, somewhere we lost the information. I know, <laughs> but it's 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 one of those things. It's like, yeah, I think we've always been intelligent creatures. Um, you know, we can talk religion or not, but you know, it is, it is why us and not other creatures. Yeah, how did we get the lucky straw? You know, depending on how you look at intelligence, like sharks and dolphins yeah. have a Octopuses. much much larger brain capacity yeah. than we do but they're not building roads and at least do we know maybe there's some way I down mean, in the in yeah. the ocean somewhere but you know they're not they're not it, it's fascinating to me i get lost in my head with some of this stuff sometimes right like why is it that we constantly have to change or improve our living conditions oh yeah why, have to get better? why aren't we Sink doing the it. same thing bees have been doing the same thing that they've done for a thousand yep. years but we figure like we have to find new adventures we gotta it. change it we gotta like, ain't no dolphin trying to go to mars no i as can't far, just, as far as i know as far as we know right but i can't just have a microphone i gotta improve the microphone yeah. right and so to your point with the tech it's funny so so one of the guys who uh helped invent and create the iphone he recently had a ted talk i don't know if you've seen this um, where where he now has created this AI that basically is like a little button thing, right? So you no longer need a phone or anything. You don't you don't need these things. You can just open up. It's like something off the movies. He just opened his hand, and on his hand had like the time. And if someone called, that's insane. Yeah, it but was it's coming. But it was projecting off. He had a little thing in his yeah. pocket, right? But it was his his thing is like. AI should be something that we just talk to, that we interact with it. You get so used to it, you don't even know you have it, right? It's just a thing. Now, I guess we haven't seen all the movies. There's movies out there like this. I don't know what's wrong with these folks. And there is a debate that's going on, like, do we need to slow down with AI? Yeah. So kind of to your question is, are we intelligent enough to actually understand artificial yeah. intelligence yeah in a way that we would be able to control it and it doesn't control us yeah, i heard someone joking somewhere like you know when it's kind of comes you know sound open from opening eyes they got to go put in jail you know <laughs> right we started it. but i think you know what skynet it's already here yeah it is honestly if you think about what that concept is here, yeah. right we all have a phone yes at this point at this point unless you're a child under the age of like 10 or maybe yeah. even some parents still get you got a phone or you got an ipad Someone you've got down a thing you done yes. every place you've been you yeah. know yeah yeah maybe even if your phone's on private whatever people there's there a is way no to do private, it private yeah. right privacy is gone there is it's done we sold that yeah it's it's wild we because sold for if you think about the crazies right folks that we would yeah. deem crazy like in the 70s mm -hmm. and 80s that was like oh big brother's watching they're gonna we're gonna sell ourselves and, and and it's like what is wrong with these people shut up that's not a here we are 2023 yeah. and you can put a chip in your arm yeah you can yeah right they do it like they, a country there's a company in denmark or norway that does it right yeah you have the company get a chip in this like that's it everything runs off the chip yeah i mean it's here right all the things the crazies were yelling back then that we were looking at like something's like, wrong damn you're all right some of it has come to reality, right? And and Big Brother is watching us. Yeah. We got in our house. We got phones everywhere, but we also got Alexa yeah. everywhere, yeah. right? Alexa's always on. So unless you then become a tech expert, right? You're just a consumer. You're a user oh, yeah. of these things. Yeah. So you don't really understand them. 
and and they're not built like how things were built when we were young. You can't no. just like this laptop that you have, your Mac. You you can't just take it apart. No. Like if you if you crack that joke open, it's done. I've, I've lost my money. It's done. Oh, back in the day, you you change the oil in your car. You could do all you the things. Try to damn I could put a new tube car. in my TV. If my tube blew out, not no more. I, not no more. You remember? You remember there used to be TV repair guys. Mm -hmm. That's not a thing. I don't, no. Where? Where are you taking this? If this cracks or does something, where do you? Nah, I gotta get a new one. Yeah. We don't know how things work anymore, no. and things aren't built for the consumer to actually do that. No. I can't. And I and I learned this when I got a, I think it was like, it started with my 95 Chevy Blazer, but it was like some car got like a 99, it was like a little Kia or something, right? And it was like something basic needed to be done. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I know enough about cars that I can at least do the little thing. You crack it open, it's like, wait a minute. Oh, there's a wire. This isn't, I got to take this thing in because it has to connect to some computer. Yeah to do the analysis, it's like, oh, we're moving. I can't even, I can't even work on my car anymore, no. right? You can still change your oil, but that's starting to change, yeah. right? And, and we're getting to a space where they're building these things that you're really going to separate the consumer from the creator, right? And now we're just going to use the things and not figure out how they work and not understand them. And that to my point is going to get to a point where if you're building this artificial intelligence and I don't know enough about technology to man, it's going to manage me. Yeah. Right. When I'm at home and I say something, Alexa pops on, I don't know how to turn it off. I don't know how to keep Alexa from hearing everything. And so yeah. look, she's always listening. Yeah. Always. Because if I say Alexa and it comes on, then just like your thing, right. Even better example, watching the, that TV show, getting a shy, Darnell, the father was like, Alexa played Earth on Fire. Or Alexa popped on, so I played Earth on Fire. Like it's about to. Yep. So it's so always listen. Alexa, stop. Right. Then you got to tell this time. Yep. And it didn't hear you. On going. It did anyway. But that's the thing, right? That's a real thing. Alexa, stop. Yeah. And so we... But it's powerful enough to kiss me off the TV. Not even in person, but off the TV. Now it's on TV. Yeah. Yeah. But what do we do? We said, I need this thing in my house. Oh, yeah. You got to have it. But why? I want to order toothpaste. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got to, you know, know, we know. <laughs> I want to listen to some music. I want to do this. Yes. Have you ever, this is, this is a, this goes back a little bit, but Microsoft used to have uh, the house of the future. Have you ever, I you ever go visit? Okay. I that. So, so we used to take students there like, like 10, 15 years ago. It was advanced then. I don't know. I haven't been since. I'm sure they updated, but it's like, we would take students there. And they had this house on campus, right? Not a huge house, but, you know, a house. But the whole thing was just a smart house before smart homes were a thing, right? And you would literally, like, the countertop, you can touch the countertop, and a screen would come up, and then you would say, you know, I don't know, whatever. I, I want to make chocolate cake, and then it'll give you all the ingredients. And then it'll talk to the fridge and say, do you have the ingredients in the fridge to make it? Or do you need to go to the store and buy something, right? So there was this whole house of just technology. Um, and it was it was exciting. You know, it's cool, right? But then it was like, hmm, this is interesting. Because how much of our freedom are we giving up for convenience? And does it even matter anymore? I used to, and I still do, I still shred papers, right? We grew up in that, gosh, shred it, someone's going to crawl through our garbage can and find our information, right? So we're still paranoid that there's someone walking around our neighborhood. Diving a dump, <laughs> dump, <laughs> dumpster in your neighborhood. And, and piecing together our trash. Right, right. But in reality, they're somewhere in Cancun or something, and they're just pulling our information. There's some satellite up in the sky, boot zooming down on us, you know, probably yeah. the see infrared through walls and stuff, yeah. you know. Because why? Because we love convenience. Yeah. I would rather go on Amazon because they've got prime days. What am I giving you? I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you my address. I'm giving you my click credit card information buy. just so I can do the click one buy. Right. Instead, so I don't have to do three extra steps. I'm gonna do this one, and then I'm gonna save my card on there because, oh, yeah. yeah. 
Why not? It's Amazon. Yeah, I you trust know? them. Yeah, they're Amazon. They no, I, no one can ever hack Amazon. No, it's Amazon. Yeah. Anyway, they don't. They don't need my money. They're you know a trillion dollar company. They, what they what they want my little two thousand dollars in the bank for, right? It's gotten so bad that even banks. You remember back in the day, if you lost some money, you know someone frauded you. There was a a twenty step process yeah. to prove that it wasn't you. Yeah. Now it's like you can just call your credit company and say, I didn't do this charge. You sure this wasn't you? This wasn't me. Okay, we'll give you money. Because yeah. it's so prevalent yeah. that it's not even worth them no. going through a process to fight it no. because they're just, everyone is like, you know what? It's a free for all out here. And some of this is just technology and the average person's understanding of it. Right. And so I think to get back to your question, I don't think our intelligence. It's changed and improved. Some of them yeah. might di- di- disagree. And that's I mean, there's fine, always geniuses like Da Vinci, yeah, I mean, those are, Einstein, you know, the, you rare, know. the rare cats, yeah. right? Um, but I think we just got better tools yeah. now. And so we can express and, 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 and represent our level of intelligence differently. We can explore things differently. We can, we now have, we have the equipment. Now we can go find black matter before it was like this theory. Now we can say no, because we actually have these tubes. I can show you that it's a real thing. Right. So, did, did you see where they 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 found the the sound of the universe? Yeah, that's fucking crazy shit. Right yeah. There. Um. Now the crazy thing. So, so okay, you get me and you know, I get into these weird worlds, yeah. right? Um. Or I can you, talk aliens out of you, face all day long. You, oh, that's me, baby. You got to understand Hinduism also, yeah. and and monks. So when we talk about, so we can talk about this. I one more quick question. Before go ahead. Go so you about to get me. <laughs> so. Let's suppose, let's suppose language no language doesn't matter. Like everyone can understand everyone, right? Okay. Someone from 2023 goes to year 223 BC. Okay. And someone from that era comes here. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be more successful? Who's going to have the easier time acclimating, so to speak? Mm. I think the person who comes from this time and goes to the past who will have a better chance acclimating only because historical contents and knowledge. Now, if they don't know anything, um, that's different. And what I mean by that is us now, we have a reference point of how things work, right? So if I go back to that time, I at least have some knowledge base of that time existing and how things worked at that time. Um, So I can understand, I'm not going to be a computer science engineer, but I can, you know, make wheels for wagons or something, right? I can, I can have an, and then, and then I have the knowledge base to know we can actually, there's rubber somewhere we can, right? Um, Now I'll struggle with like my comforts, right? Where are they using the bathroom at? In this hole over here? Really? We got to just, Y'all don't wash hands or nothing like this is just how we do it. And I got to wait, there's no restaurant. So there's going to be certain comforts of life where it's like, oh, man, this is how we do it. I would have said the person from now to then would struggle, right? Because the future comfort, right? That's that. That's going to be the struggle. I think we struggle, right? I think the person from then now, though, it's going to be such a overload. Where do you start? Where do I where where, where, where do I just flying? Everything. What are these buildings? We got stuff flying, right? I don't even have to go hunt and gather. There's a there's a store. Okay, how do I? What what is this money thing? Like now, there's there's a whole culture shift of just how you live in general. Now, if someone like a Tilda Hunt or when the Caesars, I think they totally can control the situation. No, yeah, the wall right yeah. now. Yeah, I think but, but average person. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's a subset of historical figures who would have, no matter what, always been. Yeah. I believe that. I believe um, it's kind of what you were asking me before about the person who with thirty dollars. Yeah. That's like I'm not getting paid enough. I think there are some people, regardless of time. Mm-hmm. There's certain there's a dog in them yeah. that just exists. I still love the hunters rule the world. No and they ain't gonna figure it out. It's it's kind of like you know how people like to have this debate about athletes mm-hmm. and this person who the played. And and stuff, and, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think it matters. I think if you were a goon back then, you'll be one now because yeah. you're gonna do what it takes. Yeah. To be that best person, yeah. right? There's a drive within certain people. But you see the dog in them. Yeah. That that 
you know, we're basing it off of, yeah, athletes now are quicker, faster, stronger because they have access to better yeah. nutrition, yeah. better athletics. The shoes are better. Like, Larry it's Bird, yeah, Bird never fucking worked out. Uh, come on. Probably eat cheeseburgers and fries every day. <laughs> now, imagine if he had access to what they have yeah. access to now. He would be still Larry Bird. He'd be, yeah. you know, Jordan would still be Jordan. He'd just be different, right? Um, so I think I, that that's how I would look at it. I would look yeah. at it. If, if I went back, my knowledge base now, I have yeah, no, no, I never thought about it from a point of view, knowledge base, yeah. Yeah. I always thought about like, being like, you know, where it's kind of soft. Though. Oh, man. Oh, man. But, but, but then again, like, you know. Clothes? You get, what are we wearing? What is this? How do I? Yeah. But human beings tend to survive everywhere. Like, you know, you can survive the desert, yeah. the water. You know, you get acclimated to stuff, you know. Yeah. It's going to suck for a little bit, but you get used to it. I think that's the gift and the curse of the human. Yeah. That's the gift and the curse of the human. When you think about, like, global warming, mm-hmm. if we want to believe it to exist or not, um, I think if you're being honest with yourself, you can see some things are changing. Yeah. Something is changing. Um, and what we've done as humans is we've adapted. Yeah. We've adapted. And there's a good to that, right? You're able to weather storms that other creatures faltered and are no longer here. Um, the bad to it, in my opinion, is you take that for granted. And you almost think, I oh, don't no matter what happens, you know. Yeah, nuclear fallout is cool. Some, yeah. of, some of us are gonna make it. Zombie accomplished, you know. Yeah. We watch a show, it's like, oh, there's zombies, but some of us are gonna make it. It's good. Russia We're gonna nukes, nuke, nukes of Ukraine. Yeah, it's it's all, no big deal. Just one nuclear bomb. Yeah, it's what's that? It's nothing. It's up for them, but we'll yeah. be all right. You yeah. Know? So until other shit comes over here. Until right, right. So I think, yeah, humans, if nothing else, they're resilient. Yeah. Man, you know, if you think about um, you know, I think about my people. And the transatlantic slave yeah. trade, and and you know we can debate how Black Americans are now and the struggles and whatnot. But if you think about what a group of people had to go through, yeah, over hundreds of years to to even be where we are now, that's a testament to human resilience, right? It really is, because um, they could all quit. They could all it's like we're not doing this shit and. Yeah. kill themselves or something right um but instead they said it sucks but i have a purpose here on this yeah. planet to continue my being by reproducing and and then yeah. we keep it going but then you deal and you adjust and and so yeah i think humans in general are resilient people I agree. we figure things out um it's unfortunate so often we battle each other and want to get rid of each other what's the thing man's inhumanity to man or something like that what's that and man's inhumanity to other humans mm-hmm. like concentration camps the shit that happened in serbia the shit china's doing the muslim people you know you know it's a it's not to get religious right but sometimes i think about there are certain things we put on ourselves um meaning who, who are humans? What are humans? And if you believe in Christianity, there were four people on the planet at one point, and we can debate that. That's I don't know about that either, but let's say there were the four people, Adam, Eve, um, Cain, and Abel. Abel yeah. Cain killed Abel. Mm-hmm. First murder on the books. Ain't but four people on the planet, and we can't even off, get Off the bat, we're fucking up. And that's your own blood. Yeah. Right. And so if we don't do anything, there's something in us. I think green, whatever. Genetics or something. I don't, I don't know what it is that, that war killing of our brothers fighting is, is, is for whatever reason, it is part of our DNA. It's, it's, it's been in us forever. How we mistreat each other, how we mistreat the planet and animals. The intelligence that you spoke of at times is questionable, yeah. right? Because we do things despite ourselves that really don't even make sense. Really, it's just why, why, why? I love, I love seafood as much as the next person, but damn, do we have to fish that much? Like, do we need, you know, do you need that many boats out there with that big of a net every day? Like, at some point, it's just simple math. You're gonna run out, like, like, dude. The fish are not fucking that much, dude. The, the fish are not reproducing that come much. Come on, man. 
And if they are, you're stopping the action, bro. Like, <laughs> you're not helping the situation with this, man. And then we put our arms up and we wonder why. But it gets back to our convenience because guess what? When I go down the hill to the waterfront and yep. I go to the restaurant, I better have I my, better have my salmon. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And and sometimes if we just think about it practically, like it's wild how we have become as a people that not only does every restaurant need to have what I want it to have, but we have hundreds of thousands of restaurants. Yep. There's an expectation that if I go somewhere, there will be a restaurant that serves whatever. And make it worse, like, okay, it, it is it's kind of it is kind of reasonable to want, like, you know, like crab legs in Seattle, right? But fair. It's crazy to have extra taste of fresh crab legs in Denver, Colorado. Should you have that? Arizona. Yeah. Utah. Should we, should we Kansas. have fresh crab legs in Kansas? Really? Like, and how dare you not? Right. Yeah. And then being somebody that's, you know, from next to the water. It's like, you sure you want that? Like, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go to Vegas <laughs> and order. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine like, you know, going to like Dallas, Texas, clam. Dallas, Texas, ordering sushi. Right. Like, eh, you might want to think about this. But this might not be the best idea for you, but we do it. Right. And, and, and we expect it. And when we go travel, especially as Americans, we go oh, yeah. travel, we have an expectation. Yeah. Right. I'm like, an American. We, we saved your country war too, 100 we years ago. We, we, We're still living off that. We saved you. 100 right? years ago. Yeah. No, your, grand, your, your granddaddy saved us. Yeah. Not you. Yeah. So back to, you know, Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel, right? Mm -hmm. So Cain, Cain, Abel, Cain gets sent over to the land, marry some people. Where the fuck these people come from? Uh, here we go. See, now you can. Where the fuck these people come from? <laughs> I knew I should have went down here. <laughs> I knew I should not Where have Where did come from? Are they the Granomanians? Like, so, did another guy create him, you know? Like, what do you think? Well, okay. All right. What's going to get me kicked out of the church? So I I grew up Baptist. Yeah, I, I grew up Roman right. Catholic. Okay. Um, unfortunately, in religion, as a child, you're often taught to not ask questions. Yeah. And trust and faith. Just read the book and trust. Yeah. Right. And you're taught to not ask questions because if we ask questions, if we're going to be honest, the shit don't make sense. It does not make sense. Right. And then it depends of whom you speak to. Right. So um, the Jews and their belief, it was Adam and another woman. Right. A woman was so there was 50-50. It's this idea of like 50-50 woman was tripping adam was by himself god said damn you look lonely bro let me send you a help me this time though i'm gonna make her come from you so that she now belongs mm -hmm. to you right well she's tripping she ate the apple right now we got kids one kid kills another kid because he was jealous where did jealousy come from i don't know it kills so him. i stopped going real fast right i just thought this question right why did they have two boys why not a boy and a girl two boys you think born a girl, two boys, and then they had a third yeah. boy. Oh yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. they have a third. They had none but none but dudes. Yeah, right. How you reproduce? I, I, I guess I guess Eve. I guess Eve getting yeah. it in. Or incest is a must back then. Or we can we uh, we get LGBTQ <laughs> on us in here. I don't know, but they had nothing but dudes. Then you kill your your brother. You're ostracized. Get out of here. We're gonna put a mark on you, right? And you leave. There's this whole group of people. Yeah. Right now, now depending where you believe, some folks believe those were fallen angels. Okay, I've heard that okay, before. Yeah. Some people say that. Um, some some people might argue that the Adam was created in the image, but there were other creatures created. Yeah. Right. Um, so so deep, but again, even in that, it's we're filling in blanks because the book don't say that. Uh, your 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 King James version of the Bible that a lot of us grew up reading doesn't say that. It just says the dude got kicked out, ran into some lady at the well. Yeah. And then she took him home to meet all these other people. And then they had children that then birthed nations, yeah. right? So seven nations were born from. And, and as a child, I said. Raise my hand and say, who are these people, yeah. man? Where they come? Don't yeah. worry about that. Yeah, that's irrelevant. That's that's not okay. That's so, not important to the story. So, so what we end up doing is we only look at 
the relevancy of the story as it tells the story we want it to tell. Yeah. Right. We don't want to get into the nuances of things because the nuance of things we don't understand. It doesn't make sense. But I believe, I believe there are, there is information out there. It's just when you start getting in the space of religion, then you have to deal with back to what we're talking about people. Right. Um, and so why is there a King James version? Well, there's a story that folks yeah. wanted to tell and perpetuate mm -hmm. um, that probably states something. If we show where these other people come from or, or the, or, or that truth, then we can no longer maintain the power and control because it's a different story, right? If there was another woman that was created with Adam, that gives women power that we don't want to have. So in this book that we create, we want the men to have all the power. So we remove most of the women, right? As if women didn't exist. So the only women that we share are a handful of women, two Marys, and then a couple of other wives, right? But somehow all these men just begot sons with no women involved. Um, but what we know about the world is women are very powerful, yeah. right? And, and, you know, women have a lot of influence in, in how things move and function, but there is a, um, a way in which society or this world has wanted to position men as the most powerful. And in doing so, we must tell their story yeah. and we remove the, the, the woman's story so that we don't show them with any power. And one of the miracles is a prostitute, right? Well, so which makes it worse? Yes or no? Yeah. Right. Some people argue no, and some people will say yes. Um, and then we have to we have to start asking ourselves how we feel about prostitution. Mm -hmm. If Jesus himself, let's say she was, yeah. right? Let's go down that road. Well, Jesus would go with her. So. Jesus was like, "I'm rocking with this yeah. one." Right. Now, every, all of us want to be like, well, we want this holier than thou woman. Yeah. Right. We're going to kick it with the other ones, mm -hmm. with the Mary, the holier. Now, Jesus is like, nah, she gonna, she's going to put oil on my feet, wipe yeah. my feet. And y'all ain't, y'all ain't really checking for me. Yeah. But here, this woman is humbling herself. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we're going to kick it. We're going to rock it together. And let's say she was a prostitute. What does that say about how, what our values are? Yeah. And how we treat people. And, you see and, people in titles, you think about them, right? And what we deem so we to be of value or of importance, right? So if you sell your body for money, you're somehow this evil, negative, devalued human. Instead of being like a, maybe you're a great business person, you know? Maybe, you're, maybe your body's worth that much money, right? Maybe, look, come on. We all sell in our body. Now, if I show up to work, I'm, I'm doing yeah. a task where you're paying me, I'm yeah. doing something. Right. We have valued sex in a way that it's this forbidden thing. Yeah. Right. And then that kind of gets back to the, some people believe sex was the forbidden fruit. Right. Um, that these people who women in particular, we never worry about the men as if men don't sell their bodies for sex, yeah. but it's the women. And if you sell your body, you're this filth of the earth. Right. Now, Jesus said, no, no, she's not. Not only is she not. Now, this gets into, you know, if you believe in Dead Sea Scrolls or other things, right? Like, it did was Mary actually the wife? Did she actually become the wife? Or was she at the same level as the other disciples, right? Because she was around. Yeah. And when he died and came back, first people he visited, yeah, Mary and Mary. Yeah. Wasn't the disciple. Didn't go see them. the other 12, but he's like, I'm going to go rock with them first. Yeah. Right. I'm going to see my lady. I'm going to see yeah. my mom. And then I'm going to see my lady. Yep. Right. Like most of us would do, you know, <laughs> we in love. We're going to yeah. go see our lady first. So it's just a fascinating thing when you start getting into that religious space. I'm religious. Mm -hmm. I am. You know, I fought it. I, I, this gets back to our college conversation, you know, during my time in college. Um, you know, I, I wondered why. Right. Mm -hmm. I grew up a certain way, and I only did that because my mom, right? She made me go to church. And it's like, all right. I mean, that's the best indicator of religion, right? Where you go, your parents' religion and where you're born at is the biggest indicator of religion can be. That's it. Like, any, like any, 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 there's not many Jewish people living in like Saudi Arabia. No. You know? And their parents weren't Jewish. Yeah. Right? Maybe they were there for work. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. And so your, your place of birth in whom you're born to is 90% of the religion you yeah. choose or not choose, right? Um, and so, yeah, I grew up Baptist. 
And college, I was like, no, I don't really feel like going to church. I don't have to anymore. Cause my mom's not waking me up and making yeah. me go. Right. But at that point, it was like, let me really do some digging to see, do I really even believe this thing is real? Or is this just some stories yeah. in a book that we all seem to If nothing follow? else, the Bible is a great story we're told. If nothing if, else. If nothing else, it's if a great nothing story else told. it is. What did, what did Wu-Tang say? Basic instructions before leaving earth. It is guidelines on how we can be better people while we're here. Right. Like if you look at that, if, if we base it on the what Jesus was teaching us, it's basically just do good by your fellow man. Yeah. So so two things. One thing is like I always have questions like like in the Bible, God will only talk to one person. Is it either the Moses or the prophet? He didn't have a bunch of people at a time. Yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. like he he's all he's in the skies talking to all the earth at one no, time. No, yeah, you one cat at a time. So man. one cat at a time, right? Uh-huh. And the second one is um. So when the Bible says God doesn't change, right? Yeah. Well, the God in the Old Testament was killing, has had the Jews killing rape motherfuckers. In the New Testament, he, he forgave them for everything. Yes. So how are you saying, how are you saying? I don't think it means you're different. No? No, I don't think it means you're different. Okay. I think it means, do you have children? Yeah. You have children? Okay. Yeah. How you punish and treat your children change over time. And so if I send a helpmate or I send my son, in the case, God send Jesus, right? And the idea was, I'm fed up with these folks. I'm finna just wipe everybody. I'm done. This is my last chance. All right. You go figure it out. If they can't love you and figure it out, then they're finished. All right. Send them down. He's like, yeah, they're wild down here, but I think we can... We can work with him, right? <laughs> just just give me give me a chance. And he became our voice, right? So you speak to God through him. Yeah. And he left us with the Holy Ghost, which is your, the, the Trinity, as I believe. Um, and so I think there's spaces for, it doesn't mean God has changed. It just means he does things differently. Okay. Right? His, his, his response to us is different. Um, Maybe he, I don't, I, and you could look at, maybe you could look at this as change or growth. I don't know, but it might be like, well, you know, having, you know, floods ain't didn't work. Uh, this thing is like, I, I destroyed right, some of the girls I'll that didn't just, work. Yeah, just, it is what it is. Let's just let these people do what they do. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm done killing them off or doing this thing. Yeah. And, you know, people don't realize that's like in the Bible, God kills more people than anyone else in the Bible. If people were only honest, with themselves the bible the, the 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 bible someone had said that there was a debate around like you know what's going on with like taking books out of school yeah right yeah. and so somebody was you know telling them this story like would you take a book out that had incest in it that had murder that had um, child pornography mm-hmm. and death <laughs> and well, should that be in the schools I know you're going with this. And the lady was like, hell no, that should be out of the school, right? So she's a very religious, yeah. woman, right? That should be out of school. So, you know, they bring up all these other things, right? Like evil and and all the, and, the, and Satan and all these things. Should that be, no, that should be. He's like, I agree. We should take the Bible out of the school. Yeah. She's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. He's like, yeah, that's what you, that's what you said. Because the Bible is yeah. full of violence. I know another example, the guy did the same thing. He asked this lady, and it's like, this is a lady. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to read some passage from the Quran to you and tell me what you think. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a Bible, right? And yeah. like, no, no, I don't want to hear that. It, oh, I'm sorry. I lied. It's the Bible, you know? It's the same thing. And I think if folks, so so here's the, this is part of my learning growing in, <laughs> as I did my own self learning. I don't, these, these religions ain't that different. No, not. I had a guy on here last week, they, uh, Dr. Yusuf Abdeli. He's a Muslim. Uh-huh. We're talking about how Muslim and you know, in Muslim, Islam, Jewish, and Christianity. It's the same thing, right? Like Muslims, it's the same they, thing. They don't believe Jesus is God, they believe he's the prophet. Yeah. You know, it's that's it. That's it. Muslims, when um Muslims, you don't eat pork, you know, and stuff like that. But neither did we. Yeah. So so again, if we understand the old testament, the old testament. Old testament, Quran, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's the same thing. How you treat women when they're on their cycle mm-hmm. is in the Bible. 
It's yeah. the same thing. They just haven't had the New Testament. The yeah. New Testament only in, in the Old created. Testament, if you trust fix in, you get stoned to death. It's, you know, it's the same thing. It's the laws of Moses. Yeah. The uh, Islam follows basically the laws of Moses. When Muhammad went to the mountain and heard the voice, it's is is it's the same story. Of Moses. Same story. Yeah. These these stories were have come come out of people who were struggling, right? And they wanted a savior. Yeah. And the people screamed for, we want a savior like the Catholics and the Jews. Mm. We want this, we want yeah. what they got popping off. We want, we're looking for that. So my guy goes to the mountains. How many stories are in the Bible about folks so going many. to a mountain? It's the same. Go on the mountain, 40 days and 40 nights. And then you come back with something, yeah. right? You either glowing or you got a tablet or something's happening, right? You got something going on. And, and, and then you, you create say, these laws. Like I said, dude, it took you 40 days to do a tablet. What was going on up there, bro? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's not the same so then, then you have these laws. If, if we are being honest as Christians, Catholics, Jews, the Old Testament, Moses' laws, are the same laws that folks who understand Islam. Yeah, it's they the are. same stuff. There might be some nuances and some twists, but it's really the same thing. We just had this this messenger. We had Jesus, mm -hmm. and and we said, "Oh no, this is the child of God." We believed he was the child of God. They said, "I think it's your child of God." We're waiting for ours. That's literally how they look at it. Mm -hmm. They they said, "Okay, that might be," but he's not ours. Yeah. The Jews also said. He's not ours. He hasn't come yet. The Messiah hasn't come yet, right? We're saying, no, that was the dude. And y'all killed him. <laughs> so you can't say it's him because it'll look bad. But we believe that's him. And we believe our access to God, to heaven, is through him. The Islamic folks, are just they're just waiting for theirs. Yeah, That's all. And I think a lot of people get confused. I think a lot of people think that Jesus you know, said you could eat pork, eat seafood or whatever. It wasn't him. And the Bible says the Paul had a dream where angels said, "It's not what you, we're not, it's not what comes out, we're not, it's not what you you you're printing about what comes out of your mouth, right?" Mm -hmm. So Paul's really one who's like, "Self, okay, you eat pork and seafood." It wasn't Jesus? I think people get that mixed up. Yeah. So it's the it's the idea. So there is, oh man, when they're laying down the laws of Moses, I forget, I forget. I know the Bible well enough to maybe be troublesome. Mm -hmm. Um, but it speaks to at that moment, like what animals you can or cannot eat. Yeah, right? like so they can't. Some about the hooves. They like can't, hooves, can't split, split the hooves, hooves. The fish, see for that scales. Yep, yep, yep. And so you take that, and it's like okay. And then to your point later down the line, it was like nah, you know, just pray over it, bless it. And, yeah, you know, I'm more concerned. I mean, God created it, right? We can't, eat, we can't eat it. Yeah, and you know, there may, there may be some things that are probably you probably shouldn't, but yeah, I don't eat pork, but I just think it's a nasty animal. But teach your own, like yeah. bless it, pray over it, and move forward. But yeah, there's certain things. It's just I don't I don't know what it is, and I think that's what I struggle with. Yes, I'm still Baptist, if you ask me. I don't go to church as much. I struggle with church as a whole. Like I I struggle with it, man. I what what I think church should be, it is not. Yeah, and I to me, this is so many crooked preachers and everything. I, I can't deal with that. I mean, if you're a the, preacher, I could get paid. But if you were going through the hood with a fucking I I I don't twenty care. inch you yes. know real Cadillac with a fur coat on. Come on, know. man. I I work in nonprofit. Church is a nonprofit. You do a job, you should get paid for yeah. it. You know, I, I, yeah. Should you be humble? I, okay, whatever. You should get paid for it. But I feel like. If you're a shepherd, uh, take care of your sheep. Yeah. So you shouldn't be rolling around or living a lifestyle and anybody in your congregation is hungry. Yeah. If you have a private jet. Nobody should be hungry. And you're fucking begging for donations to pay for gas. I'm not with that. Everybody, there should be a minimal baseline of life comfort. Yeah. Before I, I get to a helicopter, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, like, yeah, because that ain't necessary, bro. The 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 you know the two thousand dollar Gucci loafers, come on, man, and you got a a lady who, and I still believe I don't care, like she still should do her ten percent. I understand that, right? 
but that ain't how the church we run and we know that they, no. they give give me your 10 and i'm gonna keep asking it's the yeah. it's the it's the pastor and first lady anniversary of our anniversary yeah. of our anniversary right yeah. our firstborn was born so yeah. we need you know i get like i've been in i i love i love my people Jason, I do. I love my people. But sometimes in these black churches, I'll be sitting down and it's like, how many times are we asking for this plate, man? This is ridiculous. This is, this is, so again, when we get into what's Bible, what's not Bible, uh -huh. right? There's tithing and there's offering. Yeah. Okay. Well, tithing is a set, this is what you do, mm. right? Based on your fruits, you give of your best right? At this time, you, you do it, right? We've equated that to you give 10% of your income, right? 10% of your value. Um, then the offering is you should give your best, however you feel, yeah, right? Well, well we're taking that to a, a whole extreme. It's like, we're going to do three offerings today, three of them. Yeah. And then it's tithing on top. Come on, man. And you know what community you're in. You know the oh, yeah. people that you work. People, so what is you know, farm on food stamps, welfare, Go to make ends meet, you so know. What are we doing here? So now you get into a conversation where you get into a complex situation where you've got churches are heavy women. The women go to church. The men in my community, black men, they 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 they, they do it. You know, it's whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's like, wait a second. The 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 challenge now is like I'm trying to run my household, but my wife is giving a bunch of money yeah. to this place I don't even go to, and we get no return from from this zero. Money. I have no idea where this money's going to. Yeah. The church ain't been redone. Still the same rag raggedy Come furniture. On. Now you're talking you about know. the building fund. That's a whole different conversation. There's a 30 year building fund and the doorknob is still falling out. You know, there's, there's no AC in this joker. Like, what are we doing here? Um, yeah. And I think that conversation by itself has broken up a lot of happy homes because it's, it's way, why is there so much going to this? building mm -hmm. sure now it's money and time because you're yeah. giving a lot of time right um and, and it, it asks for building fund but then it asks for volunteer builders to build the building they, they don't right and then so so this is where i get frustrated with with church is in my community nine times out of ten the church is in the worst part of the community and there's 18 of them why the community still like this yeah why you need 18 churches? Why you need, I grew, so the church I went to uh, growing up was in the central district. There was five churches within a two block radius. Yeah, especially in the south and the south, there's church every block in the south pretty much, you know, or close to And the to south it. is yeah. wild, Yeah. right? Or there's one little one in everybody because yeah. there's a little town. Like in south, you will not say out loud you don't believe in God. Oh. Oh, hell no. Oh, you get but you can live a lifestyle like you don't. Oh, yeah. Just, but just show it. up on Sunday. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's it. You know, yeah. that's it. And again, that's what I'm saying. That's that's where a church for me, and I don't, religion is fine. I believe, I mean, I people believe need in to believe higher in power. Like I do, man. I do. But it's, it's, the, it's the physical space that we go in. It just seems so pompous to me, man, and so hypocritical. And so, I don't know. It's, it, it's, a, it's a struggle that I... You know, sometimes when you feel like internally mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be. Yeah. That's how I be feeling sometimes, yeah. man. Like I'm I'm in a the challenge though where I struggle with this and, and you have kids is how do you raise your children? Yeah. Right? Because I tapped out of church. Well, so did my wife. She's Catholic. Um and so what happens is we not going to our kids ain't going, they're not volunteering. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna wake no. up on Sunday and go. Now my mom will take them sometimes because she still goes, right? Um, but they grow up in a very like, not that we aren't a believing household, mm -hmm. right? But we're not a practicing on that level, mm -hmm. right? So I almost wonder sometimes, am I doing harm or am I not giving them? So here's one for you. So I remember hearing this one place where like there's these missionaries or whatever. They're like converting people to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So talk to this guy, you know, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll go to heaven. We're mm -hmm. talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you don't go, if you don't believe in Jesus, you go to hell. So he's the guy said, so you're telling me I've never met you. I never knew about Jesus. I will go to heaven by default. Yeah. Yes. Why the fuck are you talking about Jesus then? You should just left me alone. Well, no. So I, so, so my understanding then is it doesn't, so ignorance is not bliss in this. Right? Yeah. So 
So the the way I was taught mm-hmm. was it doesn't matter if you know or not. I see. I was taught it was like you know. Yeah. If you don't know, you're good. Not as soon as you as soon as you, you hear the word Jesus, you better believe or you're you going to know. <laughs> but if you don't know, you're, you're golden. Then like you're the guy's like, why the fuck are you telling me? Don't say nothing. Then yeah, okay. I was taught different. And and but there's a particular verse that they use, which is when the rich man is trying to pay his way. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, right. And God is like, no, all you have to do is believe in me, believe in your heart, yeah. confess with your mouth that I am the son of God, yeah. right? And you will have life ever after. Do you ever watch- probably botching that, but it's essentially that, right? Yeah. Now, my, my take on that, that's how I grew up. And so what, my, what I was always taught was if they're not, if they don't believe in Jesus, it doesn't even matter. Catholics, it's a weird thing with Jesus. There's a weird kind of relationship yeah. there, right? Um, but if you don't believe in that and you don't say those words, you don't confess with your mouth and believe in your yeah. heart um, that Jesus died and, and rose, then you won't go, yeah. right? You're going to hell. Like, that's it. There is no, like, that's that's step one. You got to at least do that. And then all these other things is how did you live your life? And then we'll figure it out later. Yeah. But if you don't do that, then everybody's going. And I used to be like, so all Muslims are going? Yeah. All Jews, all and again, I was so, in so even as a young dude, I was in yours. It was like, but their religion is based on where they're like, I'm only here because I was born yeah. to this woman. And then like all mass murderers get to go heaven as long as they believe as in Jesus. long as you with your last breath. And yeah. they they base that off of the thief, right? So the thief yeah. that's the, yeah. that's the next three crosses, yeah. yeah. If you do you do you confess your sins to me? I do. Well, you are now. Do you ever watch Wild and Out with Nick Cannon? Mm-hmm. I the, haven't seen the new. I, it's on. It's on year twenty. You know yeah. that season it can, it twenty. It can't be year twenty. Maybe season, season 20. twenty. Season twenty. I know yeah. sometimes so two this, seasons of being a year. Get on the one time a, a while ago I saw where it was like a that the skit was like white church or black church, right? Mm-hmm. So the skit the people doing the white church are like we start on time, we start on time, man. And then listen. and then and then the people in the black church like they were like snowing because the white church is so fucking boring. Yeah, and the white church like. We're finished. Wake up. We're finished. Wake up. Yeah. We're finished. Man, my homegirl, she was a Zeta. And um, she started becoming more into religion, mm-hmm. right? And so she struggled a lot with being in a sorority, trying to find her religion and everything. Um, and she she went to this church in Renton. It's a white church in Renton. Now I grew up black church. Like my whole church is black. So, so my experience is. You start at, depending which one. So we would do eight o'clock because eight o'clock, you pretty much have to get out by 10 because then there's Sunday school. Yeah. And then there's 11 o'clock service. Yeah, that's smart. Right. So you go to 11 o'clock service. And no challenge. Listen, it could be four o'clock before you leave. And that's, I'm not even exaggerating. It could be four o'clock before you get up out that place. Right. And you mess around in Seattle. Most places don't have air conditioning. So it's fine during the winter or something, but summertime and it's like 80 and you've been sitting and you're sitting, I'm a child, I'm sitting in this pew for five hours. Oh, it's, it's murder. You might as well just, yeah. And so, so that's, you know, then you would have like, like the children's service or something, but then you're just downstairs for five hours. Like it, it it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Now you grow up thinking, okay, you don't want to, if the spirit is moving, you let it move. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, who are you to say that the spirit needs to stop? And yeah. it's like, yeah, you're right. I guess it's moving. But then as you get older, you start to realize like, ah, some of the things, some of the same things keep happening every Sunday at certain times. Yeah. It's like, I don't feel like spirit. That feels like a play. Like we're watching a play now. Then I went, uh, this was the first white church I ever went to. So my homegirl, Zeta, she was like, just come to my church. And I was like, you know, this was in my part of my life. I was like, I don't know. I'm not really going to church, but I'll go with you. Because I'm, you know, I guess I'm trying to be your friend. Um, so I go, man, this thing was about 45 minutes long. I'm still waiting for like the person to run up and down the aisle and, and the music to start playing and then the, and the pastor to start preaching in harmony and all this stuff. So I'm sitting there waiting. And then it's like, it was like 45, maybe an hour. Yeah. Right. Starting on time. Ended in an hour. You're like, I'm not used to this. I'm saying, I can still watch football. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. Here's a funny story. So I grew, grew up in the, in the black side of Odessa, Texas. Okay. And so I would go trip my friends with every once in a while, right? And I was to church one time. I'm thinking I'm in my 20s then. And so this lady was supposed to sing one song, right? Oh. And then, like, everyone, like, man, this lady, we can't sing, right? This lady, like, song, like, eight, going on song, song nine, right? And it's, I heard this kid behind me, like, 
we're just gonna stop singing. No. And then and it got and the, and the mother said the father of father said, you know, well, be quiet. You know, she's blessed with her voice. That's not a blessing. That's, that's a, a curse. Yeah, yeah. And he said shit out loud to her, like, oh shit. Yeah, that's the old church ladies too. Yep. Oh, and you can't tell them nothing, man. Um, yeah, I think the only other, the only other, it wasn't uh it was Catholic church. So my my grandma, heavy Catholic. Yeah. He- I don't know how my mom is Christian, not mm-hmm. Catholic, like heavy. She's Cuban. Mm-hmm. And so heavy Catholic. Yeah, most most right? Hispanic cultures all, all heavy, Catholic, yeah. Heavy. Yeah. And so I remember going to that Catholic. So when I went to Michigan and we go to church, I go to Catholic church. And again, the only difference, so what I had to, what I didn't recognize, and I still don't really know how to function in a Catholic church too much. It's like the, the, the kneeling and the getting yeah, up and the kneeling. The word, it's like, the and, stuff. And, then, and then everybody knows all the words, yeah. everything. It's like, how like, does everybody know this? You're like, you like <laughs> mouthing them. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm like, okay. everybody knows this. This dude's going to get some some crackers and the blood of Jesus. I yes. can't follow you, you know? Oh, so crazy story. This this lady had passed, unfortunately, right? But she was Catholic. And so I went to the service. Now, in the service, okay, there was the moment where he told everyone to get up. So I get up and then, you know, stand at the end of the pew and then the usher will direct you. I didn't realize it's like, so you're going to get the cracker yeah. and the the, the wine, the, the wine yeah. right? But when you do it at the funeral, so I guess it's it's you you only if you have been um baptized yeah. in the Catholic Church. So yeah. you're only supposed I didn't know that, bro. Yeah. So I'm like, because in, in the Baptist church, anybody can go mm-hmm. do it, right? We you tend to do it on first Sunday. Anybody that's in there, you can come get your crack and your wine. Yeah. And sometimes they'll walk, depending on the church, yeah. they'll yeah. walk. Catholic, you gotta be, you know, if you had to do confession, for your you sin, had to have yeah. done all those things. Because if you do and you're like desecrating everything. I didn't know that, man. Yeah. And so I got about half. So, so you're on a hill. And so I guess. <laughs> but I actually, someone stopped me beforehand and was like, somebody I knew there mm-hmm. that knew I wasn't. They were like, see, take it over here. I was like, what? Dude, I know you did last night. You can't I'm do like, that. Yeah, it was like, you're not supposed to do it. I was like, what? Everybody's doing Everybody's getting crackers. I want, <laughs> I want a cracker. He's like, no, this is I was like, oh, okay. You guys are a little different. There's a, there's a little twist to it. So this is associated one time, you know, as like some cracker church, right? It's, it's, it's kind of funny, right? So everybody going up there, you know, doing the little wine. This little eight-year-old girl goes up there. She just chugs it all. Oh, for real? Chugs the whole thing. <laughs> it's all gone. Yeah, craziness. So, and that's and that's another difference. Like Catholic Church does wine. Yeah. Now some churches will do wine. Mm-hmm. Most of it's just grape juice for us, yeah. though. Right. So the first time I was at a Catholic church and I actually like did the thing. I was like, it was like at my friend's wedding. I was like, oh, this is real. This is real wine. Yeah. Well, this. It was grape juice, like yeah, I think. Yeah, no grape juice. No, it's real deal, it's, yeah. It's, and that's the one thing I guess I learned later in life. Catholics drink. Oh yeah. Yeah, they get their drink on, and it's not frowned upon. My religion is frowned upon. Yeah. Like they don't want you drinking. I'm like, well, Jesus turned water into wine. Like, yeah, exactly we, right. What are we doing in here? I'm like, we're not even following the, the thing. Excuse me, real quick. I'm gonna right. pay for parking again. I'm gonna get a ticket. So now let's talk about aliens real fast. Do it. No, back, maybe back there for first. So this is my thing, right? So it's, to me, it's a conflict, right? Like, does God exist? Does the Bible real? Okay. Maybe it's maybe not. But on the other hand, I refuse to believe that two random animals came together with a big bang and created everything. Okay. I like, I can't believe that either, right? So it's like, right. both have like logic to it. Most don't like, like some two atoms out of nowhere, like magically appeared and bang together and the universe came out of it. I don't know about that one either, right? Yeah, I think this is this is a so it's it's tough for me because I I I like to think I have a science mind. So I told you I wanted to do electrical yeah, engineering. Yeah. So so I think there's space for both. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I think both things can exist. Um anywhere where science in the big bang theory, for mm-hmm. example, me, my struggle is well, what happened before? Something had to then bang. Yeah. Right. So, what existed before the bang? Yeah. If you tell me the bang just banged, well, science is going to say you're wrong. So now wrong, you're saying God, now you're saying God created the bang. So something had to bang, right? Like, like, like if if everything was in this little tight needle point, all the energy of everything was in this. Well, what surrounded that? Yeah. Right. So, to me it still is this reciprocal conversation if you look at science, right, as the answer. Um, I 
look at it this way, and this is kind of the conversation we're having. Like, it's a big ass universe, man. Oh yeah, right. And just because God on this planet created us like this, another planet, He could have created big ass yeah. ants. I don't know. I mean, you James know. Webb it discovers a thousand galaxies every day, or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, why, 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 why couldn't that be? One, um, two. I, I really, I really think about this a lot, though. Like. There's something uniquely different with human beings, as we were talking earlier, right? Every other creature that we know that still exists that has been around for a while has pretty much done the same thing. Yeah. No improvement, no. Hey, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, a, like a tiger now is the same as a tiger yeah, yeah, yeah. a thousand years ago. Yeah. They hump and they come out, they yeah. teach them what to do and they do it, yeah. right? The, their habits haven't changed. It's called instinct. Yeah, instinct. They, it's about instinct. Yeah. However, we got to fix mics. We need a better mic. We need a MacBook, but that MacBook from last year is old. We got a, a new MacBook, right? We need to create a currency system that is better than a barter system, yeah. right? There is something- We need Bitcoin, we need crypto. Uniquely different- Better rocket. About us. So, so let's, let's say we want to talk about evolution, right? That's cool. I, I get it. I get the concept of it. I just struggle with the idea that we are the only creature to which evolved in a way yeah. that we want to completely and on a regular basis improve and explore, right? I don't see fish doing it. I don't see dogs doing it. Um, so I'm not one that's like, oh, well, what are we going to evolve to now? Like, why can we not fly? And why can we not yeah. have wings? Like, it's not that. I think it's, if you want me to believe that we're a derivative of an animal, then why are we so uniquely different than those animals? Yeah. Now, now, we can say artificial intelligence then. Maybe we're alien design. Some will believe that, that you know, at some point within our DNA, some point within the, the stretch of our design, there was a, a significant quick shift that science can't really articulate why this thing happened. Yeah. Why why within our DNA structure it's these these two anomalies that don't exist anywhere and just kind of popped up. Yeah. Right. That really are the difference in us and apes and other yeah. primate type creatures. Right. So I'll just talk fast. So I'm gonna do something a little different, right? Okay. So I have to go to the bathroom, right? I'll do what you gotta do. But what I'm gonna do is turn it up to you. I'm going to put the mic on you. I want you to talk about your, your nonprofit, how it got started. Okay. How, how nonprofit got started, we're focusing now with the future of your business. For your, like, just go geek out on your nonprofit. Will do. All right. Okay. Do it now? All right. Um, thank you. Good, good conversation, though. Uh, so Ace Academy, the Academy for Creating, the Academy for Creating Excellence, uh, it was an idea between myself, Willie Seals, Marcus Harden, um, probably about probably 15 years ago. Um, and really the idea spawned from us wanting to have an impact on black males in our community. So we all were in the K-12 post-secondary space. We thought in our careers, we would be able to have that impact in those spaces. And honestly, it just was more the same. So what was happening to youth when we were young is the same thing, the same outcomes for black males, males of color. Uh, so we just wanted to do something. And so we started this organization called ACE, ACE Academy, Academy for Creating Excellence. Um, and we've been rocking ever since. We actually started doing, providing services in 2011, 2011, 2012. Um, in a partnership with Goodwill, and we've grown ever since. We now have a staff of about 11. Um, we provide services from middle school um, beyond high school, and where our office is right on Rainier. We're next to Franklin High School, and it's exciting. And, and really, our goal is to help um, build viable world citizens, and it's to work with young men so that they can really understand themselves um, and understand the impact that they can and that they do have on their community. And then how do they work with each other as brothers? And so it's been a great ride. 
Um, we've worked in, I don't know, six different school districts, ton of different schools. We serve about 200 young men annually. Uh, we actually have grown the organization to support um, adults. Uh, so we provide services to parents through our parent cafe, as well as um, an area that we're really excited, which is with Black educators through our Black Educator Institute. Um, and so, yeah, we're really excited about the direction the organization is growing, um, and we're looking to continue to grow. Uh, we just started working on our three-year plan with the idea that hopefully we'll have a, a resource center, so a building that's large enough to actually start um, providing more services in house. So yeah, that's, that's ACE in a nutshell. Um, it's been good though. It's been a All good right. run. So we do a deep dive on ACE in a little bit. Okay. So back to aliens real fast. <laughs> okay. So I know a lot of people don't, you know, some people <laughs> leave aliens, some people don't write. Yeah. And like a lot of people say, I, I want to meet aliens. Right. Am I like, do we want to meet aliens? Right. Do we really want to? The example was like, you know, I think it was a, the Inca civilization, the Spanish came and pretty much wiping off the earth, right? Yeah. Isn't there risk of aliens coming like way advanced of us and just like wiping us off? I mean, that's the movie fear, yeah. right? Um, and that's humans mm -hmm. because the way we function is we feel like someone who is not like me cannot live within my space. Yeah. So I must remove you. Mm -hmm. Could it happen? Sure. Like, yeah. like yeah, if they're coming from... Some other galaxy, their technology is beyond Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to uh, wormholes just, and so, they've, they've messed up dark matter. Yeah, we not rocking with them. Yeah. They, if they feel like it's time to get rid of us. They're reading they, our minds. They, yeah, we done. We done, right? Um, but that's assuming that they think like we think. Yeah. Right? And that they don't think that there's space for more than one, right? Yeah. We watch a lot of movies. And yeah. in the movies, that's the invasion, right? They're going to take mm -hmm. our water. They're going to take our whatever it yeah. is. Right. The Independence Day, War in the World. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, that's part of it. That's a fear. No, of course, like um, I said, we're human. We want to learn stuff. We want to be adventurous. Mm -hmm. We want to explore, you know. Now we're those next ones, right? Yeah. We're going to Mars. Yeah. We're to the moon, been there. If you if it's true, we've been there. Um, so at some point though, yeah, at some point we are going to yeah go to another planet yeah it is going to yeah. happen so we're going to be those aliens now if we come back um, it's just another story if we yeah um you hope that we've learned something and meaning the point that you made when our spanish folks when the french when the portuguese the a lot of the European countries yep. when they did their exploring and found land, yeah, right. Their response was ownership. Yeah, right? I claim this land in the name of the king and the queen, and all that is and within, I, and I get all the glory and everything. All the, fame. the people, and if y'all don't want me to claim you, we're going to get rid of you. Yeah. Right. Um, I would hope that you know this is going to be beyond our lifetime, but. You know, 100, 200 years from now, when we actually do really travel outside the galaxy, but we don't have that mentality. We just go in yeah. and trying to figure out how to fit in and learn yeah. from these other places, right? Because, you know, as we spoke earlier, some of the knowledge that these folks had have been lost, oh, and yeah, they've yeah. been lost because of the conqueror mentality, yeah. right? That I'm from Spain. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. But if you did an income, you know. And if and if I see anything that is better than us, I got to get rid of it. Yeah. Because this can't be the truth that other people. Yeah. Find out. Right? Like me, I'm a firm believer that maybe we're not. Of course, we're not my kids, but my grandkids will be these space travel. Like I think so. Maybe Mars. Maybe maybe not every day to Mars, but like I I I believe like it, on the Earth will be like there's be space travel, right? Where you can go from Seattle. Go like 30 miles above the sky instead like some hill, right? And from the from your sky view, the hill the hotel, yeah. the sky, you see the earth. So you remember when we was younger, the the play the the space station mm -hmm. was supposed to be yeah. for regular people yep. to go up and stay. And then who knows? I don't know, maybe the moon is the next stop, right? Um, but that was a lot of the conversation. Like we were gonna create this space station that held life. It wasn't just for um 
astronauts. Yeah. It would be for Red people, close the people. average person. Well, whatever that meant, right? Because now we're seeing rockets are flying and the average person ain't getting in those. It's, no. it's a million dollars or whatever the cost yeah. is for that little 30 minute trip. Um, but like all things, prices will come down. Yeah. It'll become a norm on some level. It's like that team was probably $10,000 back in the day. Yeah. I think about like five hundred dollars. It was crazy, right? Yeah. You remember when flat screens were, and they had to still had the fat back. Yeah. But yeah, now if 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 they try to charge you a thousand, you're like, well, what the yeah. hell? You know, probably hundred years from now, people are flying their own spaceship up somewhere. You know, absolutely, Who knows? absolutely. My wife sent me something today about you know when we were young. I keep saying this when we were younger, but we were supposed to be flying. Our car was supposed to be oh, flying yeah. by now, right? Jets is supposed to be reality. It's supposed to already have been a thing, yeah. but. It's it's getting closer. I believe it's getting closer. Some someone they announced that like the FAA is now starting to actually come up with what those laws and those yeah. rules and regulations. So even the fact that they're having that conversation means something is happening, and it's getting closer. But yeah, I figured we'd have been. Let me tell you, we we so JFK said we're going to the moon in eight years, right? Okay, so we're from the from nothing to moon like eight years. Mm -hmm. You would think by now we've been to Mars, right? Yeah, that's where the conspiracy comes in, yeah, right? Did we exactly. ever really go? Yeah, no, right. Um, like I don't know, man. You, you got me down all my rabbit holes. And then, holes, like, man. I heard a story where, like, we went to the moon, like six eight six nine, and like, I think it was Apollo eleven, Apollo, Apollo thirteen had like rolled like the accident, or whatever. And so Paul Richard Nixon decided to cut the space program out because you know he didn't want risking American lives. Then we went to the space shuttle, and you think about it, space shuttle has less tech than the moon, right? Because like, you don't need the same tech. For, for a rocket for the around Earth than you do the moon, right? Mm -hmm. So we actually went back in time, you know, and I've seen the podcast for people, a lot of people don't realize this is more power in it, computer power yes. than what we did in the moon, right? Had a guy on the podcast a year ago, Miguel Ayala, his company is a startup. They send like small cargo ships up to space with a with satellite. He told me rocket tech as in improved since the 70s, right? And why is that though? I don't know. Conspiracy theories. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I, 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 I know what it is. The aliens Please. refused to give us any more new tech. Maybe. Because they didn't like what we were doing. Maybe. Maybe. Y'all ain't ready yet. <laughs> Y'all aren't ready yet. Now, I do struggle with this. So, <laughs> so I found it fascinating. I'm not saying we didn't go to the moon. Uh, okay. I still don't understand how they were watching it on TV. Yeah. No one's ever really explained to me. Yeah. So, if you think about what TV was in the 60s. Yeah. I mean, was the camera already there? I mean, how I did they get that. the signal back? I never thought about that, yeah. I don't, I don't know. On the, on, the, on the flip side, like, if we didn't go to the moon, everyone kept the secret? There's no fucking way. Every there's single no person, there's no way everyone kept the no, secret. No, no. Yeah, I just, I there's don't know. No there's, way. there's some things for me, it's just, press. like, I remember growing up, man, we had four channels, yeah, and, and they and, shut and, off and, at and, midnight. Yeah, and then, but then, you wanted me to believe that you can get a signal from space to, to my channel four? So how'd the camera get there? I don't know, man. I, yeah. I don't know. There's maybe maybe the camera was on the spaceship or something, you know? It, it, but then still. That's a good question, yeah. How did it get? Because there weren't, to my knowledge, TV satellites floating around yeah. the planet. TV was essentially a hardwire thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Or the antenna. So it had low-level waves. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never understood that. I yeah. just... I, my I, thing has always been, like, there's no way every single person involved in the space conspiracy or the space fakeness, like someone had to tell the mother or tell the father or tell someone, the kids. Someone. So, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. like no way. It, yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason I don't think it was, it was, that's yeah. the only reason I think it was real. Yeah. I think it was real. I just, I don't know. I just like maybe, I don't know. It's just me. It's like something doesn't make sense to you. It's just some, everything doesn't add up, yeah. but it doesn't add up enough for me to be like, no, it was like some yeah. Hollywood thing and it was faked. No, but I just I just wonder, like, man, this is I remember that time of TV and I had to twist the little I know the little UV, the little UH thing. Yeah, and then, the wires and, and stuff. And keep you the know. vertical line from coming up. And you telling me it was enough technology to get a a, 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 a live image, a live enough image from this thing yeah. to, to Houston that got out and I don't know. That, Around that the, whole world, the, the whole world at the same time. That, whole, that was a struggle for me. Yeah. yeah, I was like, ah, that seems kind of odd. Like this, my STEM education doesn't add this up. It's not It's not factoring correctly <laughs> to me. Like just, just the practical understanding of what TV was at the time. Forget the rockets and all that. The TV at the time, we were able to see them. 
And yet I couldn't, I still get blacked out from home games of, <laughs> <laughs> of my sports team. Like, what are we doing here? Oh that man, work. that's craziness. So Elon Musk is good. Let's say Elon Musk figures out how to go to Mars in like 2025. Okay. Do you believe we're already in Mars? In Mars? No. Well, you don't, you don't think so. As humans, no. As humans. I'm I mean, we have, humans. we're like, we got a probes and stuff like that like little right, right. vehicle stuff yeah i believe that you know you don't you don't you don't believe there's like a secret team already there no all right i don't but i yeah. think you do i don't know I don't, <laughs> I, i've heard that you know you hear these things yeah i don't i don't i don't know i don't know i hope not yeah so elon musk I think you do <laughs> elon musk representative calls you at 2025 okay CJ, you won a lottery. Well, I must, but okay. <laughs> you whatever it is, right? Whatever, I'm with Someone you. from the United States, right? Yeah. We're going to Mars. We got a random seat. We need you to go. No. You're not going? Hell no. Y'all can have this. <laughs> I don't like roller coasters. I don't like heights. <laughs> I'm the wrong guy to ask. Go ask somebody else. Yeah. I By the time we get there, what am I do for you? Yeah. What's that trip? That's got to be a few years. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, it's, yeah. Like, it's, a, it's a six month trip. I ain't doing And the way, the, the, way the, the solar system goes, you can only do the trip every 18 months right. back and forth. So it's a two year trip. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. I think I, I love space, man. Like I said, I wanted to build robots and, and do so you say you look thing. through you look through the microscope. I'm okay with that. While, you look through the microscope okay. while the ship takes while it takes off. Right like you go on person. You can put my name on it and I can see, like, <laughs> oh look, dancer helped build that. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm an earthling, man. How about, I'm gonna how stay about here. younger? I'm gonna stay here. 25-year-old. Uh, 25-year-old me. I'd have thought about it. Yeah. Man. I'd have thought about it. My thing is like, I don't want to be ship number one. But there you go. Maybe ship 100. Give me like, yeah. Maybe ship 100. Not only ship 100, and we figure out how to travel through wormholes. And I need to know. Six month, six month I need to know what like happened to the trip. other 99. Yeah. Are they still alive over yeah. there? Or <laughs> are they changed it like mutant aliens? Are they right? Or is it uh and what was the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Um how do you talk about oh shit? What the hell was that movie? Oh man, how do you exactly what you're talking it's about? Right here, too. Yeah, they, and, the one guy did a remake of it. And they remade it, yeah. Yeah. He was uh, the Mars. Yeah, I know what you're talking was, about. You know, when they and then if they go outside, then they have the brain bus, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's going as soon as I get in the car, I'm gonna yell it outside. People gonna think I'm crazy. Yeah. So what so talk about this gala y'all are doing. Mm -hmm. October 21st. Uh so this will be our second gala. Okay. So we did the first one to kind of uh kick off our 10 years. So it was really our 10 years of service. Um we tried it. We hadn't done a gala before. And we were like, let's just do it. So like a dress up tuxedo kind of so, thing. So yeah, yeah. We it was yeah. Yeah, this year it's gonna be a um, masquerade ball. So asking folks to, to dress up and get their little mask on. And and last year was a celebration of the organization. This year still is, but we're also doing more fundraising. Um, so we're looking to really launch um, an annual campaign in this space to to start fundraising more for our services. So the purpose of Gala is, is like get together, uh, get together, celebrate what you're doing, or some more of like fundraising or combination. Both, both okay. It's both. It's both. Okay. We are gonna have a good time. Um, it's to celebrate the young men. It's to celebrate the educators. Celebrate the parents. To celebrate the work. Um, but again, it gets back to as a nonprofit. You know, there's ways that we are able to fund what we do, and Gala is one of them. And so we'll have a fundraiser. We got, we're going to have a live auction. We're going to have a silent auction. Um, we're going to have some other opportunities to actually um, donate and win awards and probably not awards, but, you know, prizes and things. And, and so, you know, one of my things, I've been to a lot of these things growing up, uh, especially when you're in the social services, this seems to be a thing that happens a lot. Um, and I said, if we're going to do it, it can't be boring. It can't be just folks sitting in, in a bunch of one speaker after the next, after the next. So we don't, we don't do that. It's, it's, a few speakers, a few like one, two, um, recognizing a couple people, and then get the music going, get yeah. the get the drinks flowing, yeah. And let's just have a good time, yeah. Right. So it should be, yeah, yeah. So y'all y'all have a lot of partners, right? Like um, Jerk Shack, Lake Washington High School, mm -hmm. uh, Lululemon, Seattle Public Schools. What's the purpose of having partnerships? So what value you get out of it? And then how do you convince these people to, to partner with you? I think it depends on the area of, of how area of impact. So the school districts, we have an in-school service model. So we'll work with schools 
uh, to either do after school programming or in school program with their young men, right? And so we would we deem them as partners. And so it's a symbiotic relationship where they have a need as far as um, getting more men of color around their young men of color to support them. Um, and then for us, it's it's being able to provide those services, but then also the financials um, partnership backing. Um, so that's your schools and your school district side. Uh, the cool thing with someone like Jerk Shack and other small businesses, so we're trying to launch, and this is the first year we're going to launch um, this um, intense, uh, we haven't really even put the right language to it, but this real deep internship. And so um, each partner like Jerk Shack, um, Furtado and Associates, um, we're actually asking them to take on one to two of our young men to give them paid internships where they're not just doing mundane tasks, but they're actually learning and understanding the business side behind it. Um, so for whatever period of time, if it's the summer or the year, um, that person that we partner with there is kind of a mentor to them, but it's really to show them the ins and outs of the business and give them an opportunity to actually work in the different um, kind of areas for that business, right? So with Jerk Shack, as, a, as an example, they're a restaurant, right? And so there's the service side of restaurant, right? There's the welcome, um, do you have a reservation? <laughs> May I seat you? There's the, the handing of the food, right? So a lot of times youth will get those kind of roles, right? But how did you start this business? Uh, how do you how do you find food? Where do you get the food from? Like what what goes into um, negotiating prices for catfish and whatever, it, right? And so understanding that, and so our role is to, and a lot of businesses have asked us for this. Um, it's a good thing, but it's a sad thing too. They've asked us, can they can we identify young men for them because they don't really have a connection like that per se. Um, and can we kind of vet the young men? So are there young men who are interested in owning their own business or owning a restaurant, right? Can we connect them to them? And then can we provide some financial support in that? The other challenge that we're having with some uh, small businesses is they want to do it, but they can't really afford the intern, right? And so we've been fortunate enough um, to receive funding through the county to actually do this. So we have enough funding for about 30 interns. Um, so we're just starting this partnership with them. There's like two or three other businesses that we're looking to do some of that. So it really depends. So, um, and it's, it's interesting you ask this question. And the because, internship, an internship is like basically business internship, maybe marketing, like arts. Could be just whatever. Real whatever. It could be whatever. Um, we want it to be with a, a male of color so that they can connect yeah. on that level. Um, that's important to us, but it really is also about exposure. Um, and that, that it, it kind of gets into some of what we were talking about earlier with college, right? Like if I want to be a, oh, if I want to go into marketing, do I have to wait until I'm 22 to get yeah. an internship or can I do it at 16? Yeah. And then I at least have a more informed decision of maybe this isn't what I want to do. Maybe yeah. I want to do something else. Right. Um, so that's that. But I think each of our partners, and it's interesting you ask that because um, as you grow as a nonprofit, how do you define what a partner is and what that looks like? And are they good? Or are they a good partner? Are they good, bad? You know, because it all looks a little different, right? A partner might be like the city of Seattle, Department of Education and Early Learning. We consider them a partner, but they fund a lot of what we do, right? So we wrote uh, an application for a grant, received a grant, right? So we consider them a partner. Uh, other partners, maybe they're just donating or sponsoring something, right? Um, so there's different ways, different levels of partnering. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it, it just depends on what is the area that the partner wants to support. Do we, are we a good fit? Are we a good match? I mean, that's, that's another thing I wanted to be really cognizant of. I didn't want to just chase any dollar. And yeah. So being really um, clear on what we do, why we do. And then if, if if you rock with that, well, cool, we can rock with you and, and and figure out a way that it makes sense. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. So I'll probably get this numbers wrong. I think on your website, it says like the NEF average of black male educators is like 7.3%. Mm -hmm. The state of Washington is like 1.2%. Can you talk, talk, talk about that discrepancy and what you're doing to fix it? 
So we have um, what we call our Black Educator Institute. Um, and, and it's actually two, it's under 2% nationwide as far as Black male educators. The 7.3 is Black educators overall. Uh, so that includes women, right? Um, in Washington, it's like just above 1% or just below, depending on the year, it kind of varies every year. What, what our role in this is kind of um, really threefold now. One, it's getting folks interested in just going into the education field. So we have found um, through the way we deliver services, our model, especially in the summer, that it has started to spark interest in young 20-something-year-old males wanting to go into education. So we actually have six, since we started our summer program about seven years ago, we've had six um, participants go into the field of education and they, they never thought about it before, right? So that's, a, that's exciting for us. Um, so one is just getting males um, interested, males of color, black males interested in going into education as a career, that's one. Two is providing a space for Black educators to convene, to uh, have conversation, to share best practices. So there's not a lot of opportunity for Black educators to get together. And in, in a lot of spaces, you are one of maybe two in a building, if not in your district, right? So it's a isolating, lonely career choice for Black educators. And so providing a space where they can convene, um, and if nothing else, just be comfortable in their skin and in the career that they're in with each other, right? Um, and then I would say the third part to that is the professional development mentoring that, that we look to provide. So helping educators stay in education. So uh, most educators don't last beyond two or three years. So most of them leave after that. And then if you make it past that two, three mark, you probably stay into about 10 or 12 is kind of the next key mark. Um, so if we can get a lot of our black educators to stay beyond two, three years, um, we feel we've done something to help increase the number of black educators in the K-12 space. And, and, and the purpose behind all of it is, is if you believe the research, which is um, if you at some point in your education, your K-12 career has had an educator that looks like you, you are more likely to graduate and even go on to college. Um, the debate is like, what is that percentage? How, when, you know, is it kindergarten? Is it 12th grade? Like what point in that process and how does that impact? Um, but what is pretty clear is if you have had at least one, you have a greater chance of uh, completing high school on time and going on to college. From your point of view, how does Ace Academy, how, from your point of view, how is Ace Academy successful? I think there's a few ways of looking at success with Ace. The way we've looked at success is returners. So how many young men come back, right? Um, there's this old saying is you vote by your feet. And so if you show up, and you continue to show up, then you must like what's going on. Uh, that's one. Um, On-time graduation is an area that we've said, okay, we've been around long enough now, we can start to see the fruits of our labor. Are these young men graduating high school on time? Um, if they are, we, we, we would deem that as successful. Um, or are they, are they going on to post-secondary opportunities? We would deem that as successful. Um, so for the young men, the other thing that we've seen is as they've gotten older, they've come back to us to either help out as interns with our summer programs or just volunteer. So that speaks a lot. That speaks a, a volumes to us that they they felt welcomed enough and it, 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 it met their need that when they have no ties, they don't have to, and their parents ain't telling them to do it. They still show up and they say, how can I, what you all did for me was needed 
and I want to give back. How can I do that? And so when we see those situations happen, we believe that we're doing something, right? Um, and then, as I said earlier, in the education space, um, we've had about six young men who said, I want to I want to be teachers now. Um, and it's, it's interesting you ask me that because it was a young man today. He's a junior in high school. And we just had the conversation. He didn't know what he wanted. He wasn't thinking, but he's been our intern for the summer program. And this is week three. And he's like, you know what? I think I might be interested in this, right? And so knowing that currently two of our previous instructors and participants are currently in their teaching certificate program right now, um, and that was not their career goal, means a lot to us. We have another two of our instructors. One has completed their principal cert. Another one is working on his principal cert. Means a lot to us. Um, so th those are areas where we would deem success. And then there's the general, like when you look at, you know, um, attendance and, and you know, outcomes as far as um, improvement in social emotional skills and test scores and stuff like that. But to me, it's more about the sometimes the non-tangibles, you know, there's a 16 year old coming back to you when they don't have to. Of course, the follow-up question is how, how, how do y'all feel? Um, I think like any social service, but I'll speak to us specifically. We want to save all of them and save, you know, maybe that's, a, that could be a trigger word for folks. Um, we want to be here and be a help to all of them. And, and, and some of them, you know, take the, the other path. Right. So there are some A students who are currently incarcerated. Right. And I and I look at that as personally, I take that as I failed. Um, because I I didn't reach them. Right. I didn't do enough to keep them from going down that path. Now maybe 10 years later, whatever I said to them might might be a seed and plant, like we talked earlier. Um, young men, it's not to the age of 25. We talking about 12 year olds we're trying to reach. So maybe. Later in time, they'll be like, yeah, you know what you said makes sense now. I'm a man now and it makes sense, right? Um, but if you ask me, I, I think I try not to use the word fail, but that would be it if there's a young man that we just didn't connect with, right? Um, I think on the business side of it as the executive director, I would look at fail if I have to close the door for any reason outside of I'm ready to move on. Right. So if I can't afford <laughs> to keep the, the, the lights on kind of thing, that to me would be failure because I, I believe that's a lot of my responsibility. Um, I also fair or not fair. And this gets into the. Working with staff and adult conversation, like I want to have a business in an environment that staff love to work in. And if they don't, if they if they I remember how I used to go home after work with some of my jobs. Right. And I don't want my staff to be feeling that way. And if they are, then I feel like I failed in that area. How do y'all like recruit these young men to come take part of it? Like, is it kind of like some outreach program, some kind of market program, word of mouth? How's that work? All of the above. So word of mouth is is big. Um, we go to schools to recruit. So if it's a middle school, like we have our middle school summer program going right now. We go to the local middle schools. We inform the students. We inform the counselors of what we have going on. Um, we have a parent cafe. So it's our parent network. So we let the parents know um, different opportunities we have coming up. And then we have our website and social media. So we have, you know, um, Instagram, you name it. We, we got it. I think TikTok's the only one we don't have. And so um, just getting the word out and then through other nonprofit organizations that work with youth, letting them know what we have going on. So it's, it's a, it's a all the above approach in how we go about um, getting students involved. Now, if it's an in-school service, then you have to be in that particular school, but. And you're only in Seattle, right? For the most part. I mean, we, we have in the is, past. Is there a certain neighborhood in Seattle or is Seattle in general? Seattle in general. Okay. Seattle in general. Does that count like Renton, Kent, or just Seattle, Seattle? So that's, we used to be in Renton. When I say okay. used to be, it's like there were a couple of schools in Renton that we okay. provide services to. We actually, had, had, you called out one of the partners who were over in uh, Eastside, right? 
Um, but most of our work is in the Southeast Seattle Central District Central area. District. Yeah. Um, and, and we've really been thinking about it strategically, like, do we stay in that area or do we think about expanding? Right now, I want to stay in the area and grow what we have in that area um, and then talk about expanding maybe three, four years down the road. But I still feel there's a lot of work and um, growth as an organization and, and course correcting as an organization we need to do before we think about like large expansion. Like, so you ask people like, who's your perfect customer? So you, I guess the question would be like, who would be your first perfect student? Like you're recruiting a student, like, who's like your perfect student to bring on? Uh, there's not a perfect student. Okay. There is a, there is a, Student who is willing to so great predators ever is like economic demographic doesn't matter. We don't look at that. Okay, all right. We don't look at that. Um, it's really about male development is the conversations that we have, right? So the perfect student is someone who wants to be engaged in that in that space and is willing to do the work and wants to improve themselves in the community. The more common student is the one that their mom or dad made them come, right? And and we're trying to convince them that they need this, they need these kind of conversations. That's the general student, right? Okay. You know, we talk about 12 to 18, 22, 24 year olds. So they're just figuring out life. So so you might not track this, but do you find a difference between like mentality of students who like have become from a like single parent home versus a two parent home? I think and I'm going to tread lightly with this, but I'm going to keep it real. Uh, I think some of that's overblown. Okay. Um, I do see the importance of having a male figure in young men's lives. Now, is that somebody that's in their life every day or is that a coach? Um, there is a difference with the young man who has a, a positive, I won't just say any man, but a positive male figure in their life on a regular basis. So the football coach that's that's in his life during the season is cool. But there is a difference. Um, now, I think where I say it's overblown is often when we think of single parents, we think of mother. Yeah. Right. There are single parents that are fathers raising their children. Right. Um, and so it's not easy raising kids. I don't care if it's two parents, 10 parents. Like two it's, parents, it's grand, struggle, grandparents. Right? Yeah. It's tough. Um, I think my own personal thoughts are can women raise men, young men? I think women can instill values. I think women can support the development of, of children and men. I think a boy needs a man in his life to help him understand what it means to be a man and help him find that for himself. In general, we as men and women have a different perspective on the world and how we go about addressing and solving problems. Um, neither good nor bad, it's just different, yeah. right? And it's hard for a boy who's trying to develop in a way, and this person who sees things totally different is trying to make them see it their way, right? It's just you're forcing two energies that don't necessarily understand each other. Yeah, like, right? like I'll get blast for this, but, you know, I believe in the Friday parenting method, right, where Angela Bessett sent Trey to live with Lawrence Fishburne at 1314, you know, but to me, the vice versa works the same way, you know. Yes. If Lawrence Fishburne was his daughter, he should have sent that dirt girl hey, to live with Angela Bassett. What do I know? Yeah. Right? The things, I have, a, I have a son and a daughter, and there's things about my daughter that are completely different from my son. Now, they're two different humans. I'm sure if yeah. I had two boys, they'd be certain things that are different. But there's certain things that I'm just like, and we struggle with this as men with our with our women, yeah. right? Like, we might think something ain't no big deal. And to them, yeah. they're like, what the hell is wrong with you? I can't believe you did this. Or, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, it's trying to understand that. Now, imagine we are men, right? We're developed, I guess, in our ways versus young boys who are yeah. trying to figure out at the same time they're going through hormone change and emotions and just figuring out themselves in life right now you have this 
perspective that they naturally don't understand trying to tell them how to do life. Yeah. It's two different forces. And I think that's why we often run into a challenge when we, when, when we have a lot of these conversations, when it's a, a mother or, or a woman, a grandmother or aunt or someone that's raising a young man, because it really, it really is two different perspectives. And they're not, it's just, I don't know. I didn't design it. I can't tell you why it is, but we just see things differently yes, in a lot of ways. Doubt. And so how do you raise someone to see things your way when you naturally see? So they, as they are developing, they're like, this shit don't make sense. Yeah. So now I don't know, I don't know anybody that can make, so now I must be a weirdo, right? <laughs> because you don't make sense to me. Nobody over here makes sense to me. Nothing makes sense to me. The only thing that makes sense to me are these other 12 year olds 13 year olds are trying to figure out life too so now we're gonna hang together and do what 13 year olds who are lost do which is random shit in the streets and so then we equate the single mother as this it's just it's just yeah. so back to single mothers it is there a difference or is one better than the other like oh you have a single mother right no and that, so if it's a kid it'd be girl male whatever you know oh, got 13 year old kid right okay. single mother no no male influence at all right mm -hmm. another family 13 year old kid mother with a father for like a better terms of piece of shit right okay bad role model yeah which which one is a better case oh man so i'm gonna give you the political answer <laughs> it's all it's you, your first political answer of the day it's 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 all individual man um i hate the piece of shit dude all right but even the piece of shit dude can get a good nugget every now and then. You know what I'm saying? When that when the man is completely absent, I just still feel like the the young man has no bearing. So at least when the negative person's there, at least the kid can kind of have a reference of what not to do. I can even be like this dude's an asshole, and I'm not gonna be like this guy. Right? My father was around. He was there. Um wasn't the best dude growing up you know what i mean and so there's things i take away where i'm like yeah that's not what i'm gonna do when i raise my kids right but he was influential in the man that i am today right um so are there are there and i've also seen single moms with no dude around raise the best young man you know what i'm saying um, so it, I guess that that was my political. Like it's hard to just say, right? I think the numbers tell you, in general, a, a young man who is um, raised with a single mother. Um, now, don't believe. So, so the one thing I don't believe is this idea of the the young man who's raised with a single mother they're more prone to go to jail. Like it's it's like some stat that's thrown around. It's like sixty six percent higher rate. Now, what the stat is about is they they took a poll of people who were in prison. <laughs> so they're already in prison. So how many of you that are in prison were from dual parent or single parent households, right? Versus the overall general. Um, so when those things, stats don't tell the truth, they don't it's, allow you. It's, so again, so you're talking to a numbers guy, right? Um, numbers, numbers. We we like to say this thing, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Yeah. You know, numbers can tell yeah. whatever story you 10 want. Because 10% of 100 is way different from 10% of 1,000. It's way different, but I still say 10%. Yeah. Right? Um, it's up to you then to ask the other question. What's the what's the N? How many of these? Right? Um, it's a tough question, man. I still believe in all my years doing this work, man. They need a man in their life, even if he's a piece of shit. I hate the piece of shit, dude. Right? Uh, as long as the piece of shit dude is not like abusive or something like that, physical yeah, physical abuse, right? But he's just a, a kind of an absent, like dude he's unemployed all the time, and like no, just being drunk, know, whatever. Yeah, or, that guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Can't keep a job. Yeah, you actually, you know, the funny thing about it, that guy. I don't know. It it, it depends, but sometimes those boys turn out better because they're they're really like. I don't want to be like that. No, and they have a sense of responsibility, right? That they then like, I want to protect my mom. I want to protect my siblings i want to look out for them because this guy's not so i need to step up so they 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 tend to mature a little bit quicker 
So you and two other people started the AC Academy, right? Mm-hmm. Talk about this, right? So many startups or businesses or nonprofits fail because either the call them founders, business partners, you call them eventually break up and don't get along, right? Oh, how, yeah. how do y'all get along? You no, know, like y'all do. Talk about your founder story, how y'all met, like how y'all do communicate, all that kind of stuff. So you'll love this. Um, one of my co-founders, he um, I've known him since middle school. We did a program in middle school together. Another co-founder that was Willie, the other co-founder, Marcus. Um, he was at the UW together. He pledged Sigma. So all three of us are Sigmas. Um, and so we all just said, hey, there's there's this thing that we're all in education. No, no peer pressure. No. Um, we're all in education and nothing's changing for our young men, right? So we gotta change something. Um, and we decided to sit down, have some drinks, some food, and start building this thing out. And when did it, when did it start again? Like so the I so I would say our official like we really started doing services. I mean, twenty eleven. I mean, that's a but tough you know question, how right? business is. That's right? tough question. Yeah. People say when did you start? Well, you asked my wife. I started, you know, too long ago. You know, was it when we had the first meeting, or first or, LRC, or this, or, or that, when I got revenue? my business license, yeah. or you know, and I'll get back to it real quick, but um. You know, the, the feds have changed. They used to, there was a particular like um, business number, business code they wanted. Yeah, uh, NCAC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the Dunn's number. The what? Dennis. The yeah, Dunn's Dun- 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 yeah. number. They changed the Dunn's number to this new thing. Yeah. And so one of the questions is, when did you start? Right. And so you have to show, you have to show proof of when you started. And I was like, well, I don't know. There's a, there's a difference between, so again, you get in this work, like, I'm not a businessman. I just got into work to help young dudes and so we started doing the work before we had like a business license or anything like that usually works too and it's like oh we got to do this paperwork so it there's no paperwork that actually shows when we originally started so it's funny you asked that um 2000 man probably like 2008 when we first started having the conversation okay um so this is when y'all's life worked for a little bit for a little bit and then what happened is we just said hey we've been talking about it too long are we gonna do it or not yeah and so all right 2000 11 we actually like sat down and wrote it out got your plan like figure shit out yeah so 2011 12 was when you we can say like okay and then goodwill actually i was doing some side stuff with them they asked if they ace could do work with their young men we said yeah so that was our first actual gig it's funny you mentioned what you mentioned though um we had that conversation and i think because we known each other for so long we're all frat brothers. That's a big help. It 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 helps a little bit, right? Um, Marcus was my roommate for years. That right? could be a, a plus or minus. It could be. So <laughs> all of these can be plus or minuses, right? Like, like there's there's this it's some of those things like do you get in business with family and friends? Yeah. Right? Because and so it was it was it, it's almost like this um handshake agreement that we had. If any of us feel like it's time or we're not being respected or there's some issues let's just walk away from yeah. it because i would rather maintain the friendship than this organization um and some you can't go to business with everybody no you can't no right it's like i, I used to tell i told my son this he's in college now i said you're gonna have some friends but everybody can't be your roommate no because everybody you don't mesh with everybody on that yeah. level you can't trust everybody yeah. on that level and so, um, I mean, I know plenty of people I go have a beer with. I'd be damned if I would do business come with Come on. And vice versa. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. Some people I do business with you, ain't no way I'm hanging out with you. No way. You business. Yeah. You just business. Yeah. Right? I, I, yeah. No way I'm hanging out with you. Yeah. So we've been fortunate and we haven't that, that had is fortunate. Yeah. any situations. We know several people. Uh, the horror stars everywhere. stuff. And it's like they were friends from the day horror one. Stars everywhere. They hate each other and it's yeah. over some money. You know, some money. people ripping people off or mm-hmm. stealing stuff or yeah. like, well, especially start off where it's like two friends go to business. We're split it 50 50. Worst thing you do. Yeah. Or they split 60 40. They got a 40. I'm doing more work than you. I'm I need doing more, more money. work than you. Why yeah. am I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, you wouldn't be able to do it without me. This yeah. is nothing. Yeah. I just talked to a homie of mine about that. He's in the music industry. Um, I shouldn't put up clothes. He's doing music. Um, 
but he partnered with this other guy. No, so he does I know, music. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's funny as shit. I hope you don't see he's, this. He's doing music. I hope you don't see I mean, this. He didn't say the name, so I I mean, he, he'll probably but know. He'll know. Yeah, he'll know. He'll probably know. I take it back. I resend it. <laughs> Damn. Um, but yeah, it, it was a situation. He partnered with this guy, right? Um, and he kind of had the following. My friend had a lot of the following. Um, but my guy could do the tech stuff, mm-hmm. right? And so my the his his friend could do the tech stuff. And his friend built a, you know the platform and, and whatnot. Um, but then his friend kind of once the platform was up, kind of dumped him mm-hmm. and started rocking with other people, right? And and so my friend is like, wait a second. So he's out here making money. My friend's getting nothing. Yeah. And he's kind of like, wait, how did this? Yeah. You wouldn't be anything without, and so you know they only talk to each other now. They were, they were close. Yeah, right? it's yeah. It's sad. so I'm I'm gonna miss you later. So after after the podcast, I use like big video clips. Okay, I'll make some make a video clip of that right oh, there. Oh God, <laughs> I'll make a video clip of that and send it to you. Don't do that, man. So y'all y'all do a lot of programs at your at academy, right? Yes. You have a favorite one? Like, our like summer that like really like our hugs summer. your heart. Our summer, okay. our summer, the one that's running right now. Um, and I think it's. It's got my heart because this is our first. So this is year seven. And this was the program where we really were like, is the bullshit we talking about real or not? Right. So you can do after school programs. It's like an hour or two hours a day. Right. And so, you know, you can have some heartfelt conversations and then go play some hoop or something, you know, bring in the pizza. Right. You can do those things. Um, Well, we got you for four weeks. And we built out a model that is around social emotional learning. That's around um, um, mental and physical wellness. That's around math and science, right? Are you going to improve in any of those areas? Is, is, is the nonsense that the three of us sat down because we think we're smarter than everybody in this space of supporting young men of color? Is it, is it work, right? And so when I look back at the seven years of this program and see the growth and, and see what we put in, like, to me, that's the one. That's the one. Um, second runner up is starting to be this black educator piece. It's new. We just kind of stumped. We didn't stumble on it, but it's newer. Um, so you yeah, actually run a lot of programs underneath the umbrella of AIDS. Yeah. On the, what's on the website. Yeah, that's something we're talking about. Like, is it time to start Cons- consolidating, yeah, so to speak? Yeah. Some of it is, you know, natural growth of a business. You might try this, try that. Yeah, you got to experiment. Um, yeah. You know, somebody got an idea. Hey, hey. hey Go you know, run with it. Uh, yeah. And I, I, don't know, I had a dream last night and we should be taking young men skydiving. All right, let's go do it then. Let's try it and see what happens. You know, it's stuff like that. It's like, I'm always one for exploring. Like, yep. I'm not, I don't want to be stagnant, but I also don't want to be, um, cheesecake factory and and you got a menu of a hundred different things yeah. it's like well what do y'all actually do yeah what do you do well yep yep and what's the age of these young men again that you, that you focus so on? our focus is between the age of 12 and we say 24 okay um and the 20 even that that's a pretty big age right it is it i is. mean a 13 year old guy versus 24 that's vastly it's, different. it's vastly different now the 24 so so there's this term i don't know if you're familiar with it or not it's called opportunity youth um, and, and, and what that is, it's basically young men who are between the age of 16 to 24 who are not in school. Okay. Right. So they basically out here running the streets. Um, and so. Or, or the better term is the streets are running them. Well, however you want to look at it, right? <laughs> Seriously. Um, so there's kind of this two, this dual path where it's like middle school is kind of our start point. And then some of those students are going to just stay the normal, the regular course yeah. and go to high school and then go on with life. Some are going to, you know, maybe drop out of high school or maybe not even make it to high school. Um, and so we said there's a need to support those young men, too. Right. And so what does that look like? You know, it's just it's a different focus group and different services for that group. But that's where we get the 18 to 24. Is that if that group is the 16 to 24 group. Um and the other group, kind of, you know, after you're done with high school, yeah. then, you know, we're, we're thinking about, do we want to continue supports beyond high school? And what age do people take part in the internship? That's going to, so you got to be 16. You have 16, you know, okay. Yeah. Um, but I prefer you to be at least a junior okay. or a senior. In high school or college? High school. Okay. High school. Yeah. And like, how do, how do, how, suppose 
how do companies reach out to you if they like, hey, I want to use some of your interns? Like, what's the process for that? Uh, right now, I, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't no, say no. I don't say they're able to use, but like, you know. Yeah, right now there isn't a real process. If I'm going to be completely honest okay. with you, it's talk to me or Willie, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Give us a call. So I guess um, the better question is, what does the carp company have to do to come to you and, and like prove to you that they deserve that? That's the other side. Have a chance to like, you know, work so, with your guy. So right now, if I'm being really just transparent, the only companies we're working with are people that we know. Okay. Right. We, ha we haven't gone beyond. I know you use for charter engineering because he has a frat brother. And... Yeah. Okay. Or, or somebody that um, even the jerk shack, the young man, or well, I still call me young man, but he's, he's a grown man now. Uh, he was a Sigma beta. Okay. Right? So what would have That's to happen to some mean. random person off the, I would say off the street, but some random business. We'd have to sit down and, like, and, you know. and have a real conversation. Um, what that conversation would look like, how that would go. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. We've actually had this conversation though yeah. about like, okay, yeah. What if someone is like, I heard you guys are doing this thing. We want to get in. Yeah. What does that look like? So there's gotta be some vetting. So I remember y'all did a post on somewhere on social media with the interns working for child engineering. And they got a lot of likes and like mm -hmm. reactions on LinkedIn, right? So I, yeah. I, so I have to imagine, I mean, I'm surprised no one of those reactions that reach out to you is like, hey, tell me more of the program, you're right? We, I mean, we, we, we do. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot though, yeah. but we, we do get the occasional. Yeah. And, and I think that's our job, my job. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to definitely want to put in the right place, right yeah. situation to succeed. It's got to make sense for everybody. Yeah, because everybody can't take an intern either. And, and even it, though having interns hard work, it is right. Even though you, it, you I mean, it's not babysitting us damn close to it. it. Listen, it is a child. Yeah. Who this might be their first job ever. Right. And, and are you actually? I'm pretty sure you don't want to like um, put someone in a position, even though they get paid, but they say make my coffee, get my dry cleaning. That's it. That's fucking waste that's of time. That's not what we're doing. It doesn't matter how much money you pay someone. You, that's you, not what we're life doing. Skills. Yes. Right, exactly. Like, so, how does the company prove to you they're not going to do that? So that's, we need to figure that out. We yeah. need to figure out, like, what is our process mm -hmm. for filtering companies to make sure that not only the young man, but the, that the business has the best possible yeah. outcome. And so I tell you, I work in startups a lot. A, a lot of startups, like, the jump the chance, like, have an intern, pay a little bit of money, right? Mm -hmm. But, of course, you got to figure the shit out, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think part of it is... For me, when I was working in the city of Seattle in the engineering department, I was an intern when I first started, mm -hmm. right? So I think it was a long time ago, but I still have that perspective of yeah. like, they weren't really ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was a lot of me sitting around doing this. Yeah. Like, okay, I finished this thing. What's next? Yeah. What do you want me to do? And they're like, well, because insurance, are, the insurance is going to be like, no, jumping at, like, they want to go be motivated. Yeah, I don't want they to don't sit put here themselves. All day. Yeah. Right. And of course, you know, of course, you want to pay intern, right? If you, you don't want to pay intern, right? But my argument has been like, well, you have two scenarios, right? One scenario, you pay intern, we say $30 an hour. But all they do is make a coffee, do a personal task, right? Another intern. And then not only that, the person in charge does like really take networking events, doesn't really connect with anyone. Other side, you're not paying the intern, but like, they're actually doing something, right? You give them a project to do, mm -hmm. take them other network events. Hey, here's my LinkedIn. And like, well, what's mm -hmm. one more valuable internship, right? Yeah. Well, of course, you know, the album is like, it's like, you know, it's a privilege because the person who's rich or like with money can afford the you know, non paid yeah. one, or someone who needs the money is going to take the bullshit one. Right? So this Absolutely. is all these arguments, right? Absolutely. So, one more question, right? So, let's suppose, break it down, right? Not color, race, anything, right? Suppose you have like upper, upper class and lower class, right? Okay. Upper class, you know, they're doing well, making money, a lot of jobs. And that uh, upper class has a lot of jobs to give, right? Lower class, like, they're struggling or whatever, right? Is it responsible of the upper class to go down here and bring these people up? And, hey, hey, lower class, come to this networking community, come to this stuff we're doing on. Or is it responsible of the lower class to, to find those opportunities? Mm, come on, Cadmus. Responsibility. Now you want me to get into the social construct debate. Um, I think the responsibility of the haves, so your, your upper class, is to provide an opportunity and access for your lower class. I think that's their responsibility. I don't think their responsibility is to necessarily 
go down and I, I, you know, I hate these terms, but yeah. you know what I mean? If we do a visual, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there, there is, there is a concept like if, you know, you reach back for your brother. Right. Um, I get that. Um, but we talk about responsibility and it's a tough word. I think what you should do. Yes. Is reach back. Um, I think you're responsible to not block the people who don't have from having an opportunity that you have and you're responsible for giving them space to have that opportunity that's my feeling i think the challenge is are we talking about a capitalistic space are we talking about right because that plays a part in unfortunately some of the conversation um but if we just just on the level and it's here's this group of people got all the apples and this group ain't got no apples let them get some you may, you may not have to give up your apples but you know move to the side so they can get to the tree too right um but we we operate in a space of fear that we feel like there's not going to be any more apples like all of a sudden the tree is going to stop growing apples so i can't let yeah. you have any and then when the next one comes i got to get it before you right um yeah we gotta stop I, i'm just there is a absent of race and and even so, like there we had a whole conversation earlier about the businesses in this little city of ours right that are global businesses there's enough resources yeah the pie is way big it's 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 ridiculous and i don't understand i'm not even here to be a we don't got to be a socialist or whatever the terms are right but this concept as if there's not enough to go around when we know good and doggone well that there's a percentage a very 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 small percentage of people that have a lot of it right and it's it gets to a point where it's when is enough for you yeah how many apples do you need? Like, I I understand how society is structured. I understand how things work. You're not gonna just zero out your account tomorrow because you your heart tells you to. Like, I'm not asking that either. But it is a point where it's like, well, does one dude need a trillion dollars? Yeah, I definitely need a balance, right? Like, on one hand, like there's so much tech networking going in Seattle, but it's always the same place, right? Like, yeah, can, can you do a couple events down in South Seattle hey, uh, once in a while, right? What are, What are we doing? Here? But on the other hand, too, like I know so many people, like, oh. I'm not gonna leave my neighborhood, right? Like you gotta go somewhere to make shit happen, right? Yeah, now that's the other thing. You, you know, just can't stay in the same neighborhood, and expect people to come help you out. Yeah. You gotta, you know, the yeah. public, you gotta get on a bus, you know, we gotta go meet people, right? Yeah. So there was there was a time in our old country, right, where you had to move to where the next opportunity was. Yep. And I think we are switching that philosophy, like somehow the opportunity is supposed to come to us, right? Yeah. Like you look at a place like Seattle and you can say it's too expensive to live here. It, damn right it's expensive yeah. right then you're gonna have to move yeah. and and when you grow up in a space you feel like you sh you almost entitled to live in that space your yeah. whole life well no one promised you that yeah. right and and even how i got here i told you i was born in michigan my family moved from michigan because it really wasn't nothing kalamazoo michigan and grand rapids were the, there's nothing there man it's like kellogg's and a big, uh, you know, <laughs> you know a, a big hospital. Like that's what people. That's what, that's the work. Yeah. Right. So what are you doing? You you leave or you leave or you stay in the rut that you're in. And then the flip side here, it's too expensive. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of opportunity here, but it's expensive to start out. So you have to ask yourself as a young person, am I willing to move somewhere? And and commute in, yeah. right? To then, or do I just say, hey, maybe this isn't it for me. Maybe I come back when I'm older and I'm more financially established, and I go find something in, yeah, Oregon or somewhere. I don't know where, but you know what I mean. Like move to where you can afford to start a life for yourself. But I don't know. We're in a weird space now. It's almost yeah. like you feel entitled to. And this might be a good example. So I'm I'm doing a pitch competition Tuesday, right? So. I'm I'm putting it on uh, this lady in Karina. She's half black, half Filipino. She's hosting it with the Washington Maritime Incubator. 
this guy named Byron Robinson, he's a black guy, US Olympian, he's sponsored, right? And like Karina, she posted all the, all the, like the, like, you know, Black Chamber of Commerce, all these different things, you know, I put everywhere, you know, of all, all the people at pitch, apply to pitch on a, on a, on a black person apply, right? Mm -hmm. The rest of them were like a white or Asian, right? So I'm like, man, like, we're posted everywhere, right? Like, yeah. we only got one person. I think, you know, and I saw the post. Yeah. And I think some of it is ignorance. Mm -hmm. And 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 I blame And we got some pretty good prizes too, you know. It's like like yeah, you're on pitch for some bullshit. You no, know, like, it's real stuff. Yeah. But I I guess when I mean ignorance is we don't understand. I hate to say, okay. I hate to put us in a pocket like that, but there's a there's a lot of times in how business finance some of these things work that what I think people who are in it, the lingo that is used, the terms that is used, what happens is the assumption that it's shared knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Right. Or that what I have is a value to enter into that space. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas people in other communities don't even care if it is a value or not. They just do it. Right. Um, and so sometimes when we see things like that, right, like Roxanne, if I don't have anything to pitch, I don't, I don't have a, a thing, you know what I mean? And it's like, no, you do. You do. Yeah. You do. You have to be bold enough to say, maybe it's not exactly where you want it to be mm -hmm. and be okay with that. Right. But I do believe it's, it's a, it's a dual space where folks in my community, I don't think completely understand what that kind of opportunity yeah. thing and, even and, and, means. And the thing is like like you know even when someone says I'm not ready, I'm not gonna win, you're pitching in front of like 50, 60 people. I'm live streaming like well that's who knows who you're, who that's the you're idea here? of the whole Shark Tank yeah. thing. Yeah exactly. right like okay so they're from that world they knew enough of this like we're gonna start a show because people always come to us with ideas. They want to pitch ideas, yeah. right? And some of these ideas are half baked. Yeah. You know, some of it is on a napkin or something, right? I think sometimes when you're from a particular struggle, a particular community, it's hard to see your value. Yeah. And it and and when you don't think your thing is the greatest thing, or it's not, you can't present it in the greatest way. You dim your own light, and you choose yeah. not to even. Yeah. Do I mean, it. on the one hand, you don't even have to be perfect. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to get up there and embarrass yourself, like struggle yeah, awards, no, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you know, you want to be, have some kind of like minimum standard, but then again, you don't have to be like, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Steve Jobs. Perfect. Right. It don't have to already be a $10 million no. business. That's not what you, that's not the purpose. The purpose of it is to get the idea out. Yeah. You have some baseline of thing. Yeah. Right. And what's going to put you to the next level is. Ooh, if yeah. I got a boost from someone yeah. and yeah. And, but I don't know. I, I just, I just believe like, I think like, about how do, you, how do you fix that? Right. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that's part of what I'm doing with ACE is educating yeah. folks on things. Like so we're doing this. We, we have, we have like eight investors showing up. Or, I mean, for eight, no, investors have, eight investors have signed up for the coming. That's a different story, you know, but you know, like, yeah. Yeah. It's real stuff. Yeah. Like one, one of the things that we did do within ACE a couple of years ago at Amazon was we had the young men, do a shark tank thing like pitch an idea and so similar to what you're doing like i want to do that for you so that they can present ideas to real investors and maybe that idea grows into something right but there's certain things that i don't know jason there's certain things that our community at times we just didn't have conversations about yeah. right like home ownership is one you life know, insurance life like all these things trust funds and and there's just certain things that we don't talk about. And I guess you're just supposed to figure it out. Yeah. Right? Here's another story for you. So back back in the day, we used to go to a, like the Taft Academy, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, some kind of pitch, pitch competition, right? And to me, this is still the best idea I've ever seen anyone pitch, right? These three eighth graders, they pitched the idea of taking your phone and using your electricity of your body to charge your phone. Like, they're, they're, yes. I think you were there too. Like, like, oh shit, that's the billion dollar idea. And then a week later, the kids stopped for the program because something happened to their parents. Like, fuck. 
Yeah. Like, dude, that's not good. Like, I mean, you buy his electricity, right? Like, like shit, that's fucking golden, right? So where are we at now? How do we start this conversation, right? Like, it's stuff like that. And yeah, but, you know, as a, as a young person, like, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to start a business. I don't even yeah. know the tech. I don't know, but I have this idea mm-hmm. that, yeah, when my phone is low, maybe there's some way I can use, yeah. you know. And it's it's those things, and and as adults, sometimes kids see things way, way different, different than we do. Way different, way better. Yeah, but we have the resources to help them, right? Yep. Um, but it's exposure, it's opportunity. So when you talk about the have and the have, yeah. you know, are we giving those who don't have access an opportunity, yeah. or are we blocking? Yeah. Right. The term is gate. At, at minimum, right. if we, if we should not be blocked. At just, a minimum. Yeah. Just at a minimum. Move out the way, man. Be blocking, no. you know. If you don't want to help or you know, you know, bring people up, okay, I got it, you know. But at least don't block. Don't stop me from yeah. doing it, right? And don't make some Brandon bureaucratic rule. What is this? And so this is kind of like the whole affirmative action thing that we, you know, talked about a little bit. It's like I think the white and Asian community is doing fine as far as access in college. Like I think you guys are doing okay. I don't think there's a yeah issue yeah I'm okay the one are doing better than anyone anyone okay so so yeah every every year there's a couple of students who feel they should have gotten in something yeah of course i've heard all the time like though equal opportunity the, the demographic that did best equal opportunity was white females yes I, I've, I've always heard that i've never researched it you know it is no i'm not gonna I'm be telling you people said i do research on facebook or whatever I am. Like, i've always heard that like white females it, is the best 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. white females benefited the most from affirmative action there is a whole list of people who benefit from affirmative action opportunities. Yeah. And it, it has to do with gender. It has to do with military veterans and service, disability, age, race. That's not the order of who benefits from it. It's white women. Then it's, it's racial groups. It, they, we, we love we. The conversation then immediately goes to black, yeah. right? It's, there is a fixed conversation of white and black in this country it's a fixed conversation so when we're talking about access to things they used in this recent conversation the asian student to push this agenda but the conversation was about black kids and somehow black kids aren't good enough and 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 they're only in because of this thing like now there's other race groups who benefit from affirmative action as well as military veterans, those who have disabilities, right? There's, there's, and, and, the, and the purpose for that was the haves blocked everybody else. And so the only way for folks to get just a little bit of that apple was legally, there's something had to be put in place to say, just move out the way. So let me ask you this. This should be a serious question, right? Equal opportunity, right? Should people like we'll say kids of Bill Cosby, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, um, like rich people in general, take, be take be able to take advantage of equal opportunity? Yes. Think so? Why? Yeah. I don't think finances is necessarily the conversation that it's centered around. Now, are they in a better position? Because Money talks in this country. We know that, right? Um, but if you're black, you're black. No matter how rich you are, you can still get pulled over. And you know what I'm saying? Um, I think we are talking about hundreds of years of social issues mm-hmm. that will not be solved because my father made a little bit of money. Right. You know, that's a great point. Bill Cosby and them were like any rich black person minority to make a lot of money, right? Okay. But basically it's not like money. Like, like people think Shaq's rich. Like when he's playing with the LA Lakers, you make a lot good. of money. No, the person rich is fucking Jerry Buss. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's good. LeBron, they, it's good money. But your point, right? Like, yeah. The challenge, and 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 this is where I, I, I push you, um, and I understand the question. The issue, though, is when it comes to us, 
our way of breaking into that space tends to be entertainment, right? And so there's there's some white dentist somewhere who's probably making as much as, you hey, know what I mean? I, I, have you seen this skit with Chris Rock went on TV? Yes. You know, yeah. you're like, it's real. my neighbor was a fucking dentist. Like, it's, it's me, Jay-Z, Mary J. Blarge. My name is fucking Dennis. A dentist or a hedge fund person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so should they still get access? Because I think part of that is the assumption that finances fix the problem. There's only one generation, like you said. There's not multiple generations. And he plays basketball, man. Right? Like, I'm not saying he's not intelligent. And, And Bill Cosby tells jokes. Yeah. Right? Do they know how to get their kids into college? Like, like we're assuming now they get it, right? They yeah. understand, or they got yeah. people around them that'll do it. And it's like, not necessarily. No. You know, they, they are they better off than my dad was? You know, yeah, no doubt about it, right? They don't need, they're not going to have uh, student loans yeah. if they get in, right? They're going to be good. They probably went to better academic high schools. And if they struggle, they probably had tutors. But what do we know about the case that happened some years ago when the rich folks got caught paying for their kids to go to school? The USC. Right. So, the, you know, like, like my daughter is on her own team. No, she's not. Yeah. So it's 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 one of those things where it, the unfortunate side of it for LeBron's kids are like when you are a person of color and you get into those spaces, college in particular, n- n- they never, f- you don't feel like you belong. Yeah. Right. So but it, they're going to look at LeBron's kids like you're only here because LeBron is your father. Yeah. You, right? you paid your way. Right. In here but somehow if you're Bill Gates's kid, you're intelligent. Yeah. Right. That's a narrative that's all fucked up. It's crazy. It really is crazy. And that's some of just the weight we carry. And so even if you get rid of the race part of a part, that, that part won't change. There's yeah. always going to be some, oh, you must have somehow did something because you can't be as good as me in this space yeah. right and the reality is you know a lot of these kids are getting to these schools and- do you remember this it happened a while ago where um uh, maybe 10 20 years ago when a snoop dogg son and uh puff daddy song son i don't always call him down whatever his name is their son's got at the their son's got at their football scholars in ucla and they've got blast right oh they have a lot of money they don't need to do this right like mm-hmm. They earned that. They earned that. Through their athletics, right? It's not academic scholarship. It's not anything else. It's not need-based. No, it's and athletic people scholarship. people actually online blasting Snoop Dogg and Puff Daddy for not paying for the sons. Mm-hmm. It's like, are you kidding me, right? Mm-hmm. But it's, you don't do that with anybody else. No. So, no, I shouldn't have to pay. They earned this, and you're going to use my child to make money. Oh, they're, yeah. They're not just a college student. Like, you're yeah. going to use them yeah. to sell that's, tickets. That's, and that's back before NIL was mm-hmm. in the thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know they used to shut up them two kids. Mm-hmm. Recruiting everything. So, hell yeah. Come, come go to UCLA, and you might be able to hang out. You might be able to have sex with Snoop Dogg's son. Maybe. <laughs> you know, right? Some, some right? Like that. Or uh, who was the kid at uh, USC? Um, Master P. Yeah, was, yeah, you know what Romeo. I mean? Yeah, like, come on. You knew you were selling tickets so people, so fans can see little Romeo sitting on the bench. Yep, yeah, that's all you did sit on fucking bench. That's all you did, too. <laughs> but he was on the team, so I guess. Yeah, true. All right, hey, so is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't or anything else you want to talk about? Man, what what didn't we cover? I think we covered everything, boss. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, can you give us your social media links for yourself and your, and your company so people can reach out to you? Everything is Ace Academy Wall, Ace Academy W A. Okay. And that's um our website is aceacademywa.org. And our social medias are all Ace Academy W A. Yeah. And for those who don't know, org is because you're a nonprofit, right? Correct. And is you have, no, I, I I should know this, but if you're not profit, you have to be an org, right? I don't know if you have to be. No, okay. but uh probably. Okay. I, I think, think all nonprofits I know are. Or great. Or what maybe it's some, maybe you get a discount or something. I don't know. That's good. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. I don't know if it's automatic. Yeah. It probably, maybe automatic, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I never even thought about that. It probably is some kind All of. Right. So we talked about a lot. So last thing, can you give us any wisdom or advice or anything you want to talk about? Any wisdom, advice that we haven't discussed yet? I guess just still be true to self. Always, always be true to self. That's it. 
CJ, thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate you too, brother. So listeners, thanks for your time as well. Remember to be great every day.